And we're live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. Uh, it is yet another uh, a live stream here on uh, the channel Atun Shea Films. Uh, today, my very special guest is George Rockel Schmidt of the hello. YouTube channel. George Rockel Schmidt. Hello, let's say hello, everybody. Thank you. So, George. Hi. Yes, uh, thank you so much for being here. Um, so today we're going to solve uh, all the world's problems. Um, yes. And uh, this should be a fairly simple, straightforward, mm -hmm. you know, process. Uh, thankfully, I've got plenty of liquid uh, inspiration here to uh, to draw from. Good. Good. What well, What are you drinking? I'm drinking a uh, a strawberry lager from a beta. Oh yes. dear! Is it fizzy? Yeah, uh, is it? It's quite fizzy. Yes. All right. Yeah, well, no, I don't hate it. Well, it's very hot. It's very good to have sort of, a, you know, to have hydrating drinks like strawberry beer, which I think that makes it healthier um, because uh, it's like 115 degree index here in New Orleans right now. Uh, and the air conditioning <laughs> in this building won't uh, get below 82. So, uh, yeah, it's fun. Okay. Well, I suppose that's what you get from, you know, living in a museum. That's true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like? As you can see, with uh, the yeah, precisely. I do live in a museum. Uh, yeah. I belong in a museum. As I live in grandma's house. Clearly. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, no, it's actually, uh, th and this is true, isn't it? That you live in a one-room shack in rural Kentucky. It's not a one-room shack. It's not a what? No, it's not a one-room shack. I'm pretty sure it is. I'm pretty it's, sure it is. Didn't, it's a, th it's a three-room shack. Oh, okay. Didn't that, uh, um, uh, you know, the uh, something uh, people may not know about you. Um, uh, do you guys know the, the book uh, Walden? George wrote that. <laughs> yes, I did. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. I, I lost all my talent since then and my memory. I'm like. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's only ben been. Benjamin Button vampire. Where? Yeah. It's only been 170 yeah. years, you know. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah. so, yeah, so so um, uh, George uh, has an amazing YouTube channel uh, that I'm a huge fan of. I've been watching for many, many years uh, where you you made. Uh, so basically, you kind of like got your start start. We were kind of talking about this before before we went live. You kind of made, got your start making very kind of weird, abstract, um, just like pieces of art, you know, uh, uh, where you would just kind of complain about something or, you know, yes. theorize about whatever you wanted and i guess you kind of still have that spirit of like you're kind of genreless um but then your channel kind of got big because of uh of movie reviews right yeah i suppose so um i mean the first video i did um that kind of got big was because it was actually a bizarre summary on the streisand effect where i tried to sum it up in 10 minutes what the streisand effect is and um someone posted it to reddit uh, like, do you remember when United Airlines kicked a dude off? Like, they dragged a dude off because it was overbooked. Yeah. Um, on Reddit, everything, like, all the front page changed to just stuff about that. Mm. And my video was like on the front page of Reddit for a day, thanks to someone I don't know who uh, posting it. So, I mean, but movie reviews definitely, definitely helped. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, that was a generous, gen generous telling of what my old stuff was. <laughs> uh, well, you know, uh, yeah. Well, I, I like your shit, so you know, yeah, uh, makes sense. But, uh, um, uh, but yeah. So and then and then you, uh, so you, you you made a bunch of shit until you know until you sh until you until 2019 when you raised money for your movie, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Am I remembering this correctly? Please let me know if I'm yes. just butchering your life story. Uh, and then, and then you you shot your film, which is called Collaborator, which is on YouTube, um, yeah. for free. Yes, and it's really good. yes, yep. And oh, then, thank uh, you. Is it? Yeah, yeah, I liked it. Yeah, good. yeah, no, it is really good. No, I mean, yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it, it is, is really, it's good. really good. Yeah. Uh, and um, uh, and then you disappeared for like two years. Um, mm -hmm. And then you came back uh, with some uh, uh, exposés of skeevy con artists and billionaires. Um, yeah, yeah. So what? What? What sort of? And and among other stuff as well. You still do movie reviews, and you know, and mm -hmm. George Plains and and the Shill Master, and and then fucking oh my god, I just remembered this that fucking Shark Tank video. Oh yeah, <laughs> where, yeah. Where you were covered in sweat. <laughs> was the fun? Was so I laughed so hard when I first saw that. 
yeah you see you asked me earlier like what was i doing for two years like oh i should have been making collaborator i was doing stuff like that <laughs> I, in that particular video i just got very bored one day and thought i'm gonna film myself covered in baby lotion and that yeah. would be a good reason yeah 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 and, yeah. and it was yeah. Um, yeah. yeah uh yeah fucking made me laugh um <laughs> good yeah good. yeah good. but uh but, uh, so what what inspired and, and we can kind of transition into solving all the world's problems uh maybe mm. with, with this question but like what uh what inspired the the sort of um the kind of the multi-part sort of documentaries you know i mean some of these are fucking like really chunky hours long pieces about yeah. you know uh about these con artists and these billionaires and and sort of the ultra wealthy like well, what what specifically kind of inspired that um, I don't know. I mean, it's a good question because I suppose, I mean, I, I did bizarre summaries from the get go, what I call bizarre summaries, which are, are videos about things I find interesting, usually sort of socially interesting or weird things um, like the stress end effect or, you know, kind of what is gentrification, I think was an old one. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, I, I guess I guess I probably changed a bit because of the pandemic and just because of time. And I sort of, um, you know, I'm still really interested in films and still love watching films, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of, I suppose I'm quite a venomous person and I'd rather <laughs> like, use that venom on like someone who deserves it, like the Sacklers. Yeah, yeah, for real. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, well, honestly, I, I find them like, uh, I, I really love all of those documentaries because I think they're like, it is such a good use of venom because I think so much, uh, um, I don't know, I think there, there's, there's, there's so much just like drivel online about uh, where it's like, from, I, I guess, well intentioned people who like want to make the world a better place, but who kind of like get stuck in these little feuds. Uh, particularly mm -hmm. like, uh, um, you know, content creators who kind of like have these battles, you know, about like very slight ideological differences that don't fucking make any real difference yeah. at all. Um, and, and so there's a lot of like, you know, I feel like a lot of people who, who, you know, kind of are genuinely sort of, uh, uh idealistic and, and, and want to sort of right the wrongs and, and, and fight the injustices of the world kind of get, caught up in like hating this content creator or this person on Twitch or this YouTuber or like, you know, and, or this Twitter personality. Whereas I, I think, and I don't, I don't want to speak for you. I don't know if it necessarily comes from the same place, but like, I, I thought that your, your documentaries are a very refreshing kind of change of pace in that regard, where it's just like, no, fuck that. Like, look at these motherfuckers above us. Like, look what they're fucking getting away with while we squabble, you know? Uh, yeah. Um, look what the fucking Sacklers are doing. Like, it's all public record. This information's out there. Like, yeah. these people are fucking murderously duplicitous and greedy uh, to, you know, they will set the world on fire rather than 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 be less greedy, you know? Uh, Absolutely. And, uh, and, and that stuff was just like such a fucking, uh, uh, so refreshing, you know? Uh, uh, I, I just love that. Well, yeah, well, thanks. Um... Well, that's good to know. I mean, I, I, yeah, I feel like I just kind of, I don't know, reached a point where I just had enough and I can make <laughs> videos about, I mean, what can I do? You know, I'm just, yeah. I'm still just complaining. I'm not really changing anything. Well, you know, I don't know. I think individuals can, can make a difference. Do you yeah. disagree? Are you hopeless and, and just like, just a, just a hopeless slug of a man? No. Um, well, I say that. Um, no, I, I I agree with you. I think it's just you know, uh, it, it's it, it's just a thing where it's it's not impossible to affect change. It's just incredibly hard as an individual, and yeah. you know, like basically what you said with you know, like YouTubers, content creators fighting. You get that with anything, so you end up getting you know. Uh, you know, when you start responding to stuff, you end up then shooting down avenues of, well, we, you know, we came together because the government is corrupt, but now we're talking about, you know, our own bureaucracy. And it, it always seems inevitable, but I mean, you're right. You shouldn't give up hope. 
Um, yeah, you know, yeah, it's 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 hard not to though sometimes. Although, uh, so let's move on to our first. Uh, speaking of giving up hope, uh, let's solve okay. climate change for our first problem of the evening. Let's solve climate mm -hmm. change, uh, George. Okay. What do you think we should do to solve climate change? Um, to solve it, as in to stop it. Yeah, or to, to stop it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I guess yeah. So we we don't even want to disagree then that climate change is a problem because you could just say, <laughs> could just say whatever. Whatever, yeah, it's not a problem. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, some places will flood and things will get worse, but we'll we'll keep making money and you know we'll just have to build houses on stilts. That's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. What, I mean, you know, climate change is great. In fact, like you know, <laughs> you great, nice yeah. tan and well, you know, think of the jobs that uh, climate change could uh, could uh, yep. um, could create. Fresh professional sandbaggers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That side of things. Yeah, yeah. Flood um, coordinators, um, yeah. Uh, um, uh, hurricane gurus, you cyclone know. dissipators, cyclone dissipators. Yeah, uh, assistant to the regional cyclone dissipator. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Well, I don't know. I, I do. I do think there is like there's an aspect of the the climate change thing where it's like um, uh, I don't know. It's like as long as like a lot of the companies and this kind of goes to the individual change versus kind of group change or whatever. I mean, yeah, it, you're totally, and your point is like totally taken that like, you know, it, people have to like form coalitions and groups to like change things. Um, and, and you, you've got to do it sort of as a block, not as, you know, as, as individuals here and there, you know, but, um, uh, and, 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 you know, considering that so much of climate change is like caused by, a handful of companies, right? Of these just mono, huge corporations, you know, it, it just seems to me like they're never going to stop wanting to make money as long as there's money to be made, right? Like they yeah. will, you know, I kind of, I, I sort of uh, waxed pretentious about this in my, my latest Ravenous video where it's like, they will keep buying and selling until their heads disappear beneath the water. Like they, you know, they just are not going to stop. So like, uh, I don't know, it, it seems like, you know, and the government keeps, you know, uh, uh, has offered like some incentives and stuff for companies to like transition to cleaner energy or whatever, but it just seems like they won't be stopped until they're like forced to, you know what I mean? Yeah, I do know what you mean. So I, I thought you might ask me about climate change and I was thinking about, you know, how, um, how you could like realistically go about that and, I think that, you know, th there's a lot of not incorrect feeling of, you know, well, the politicians are all really in the back pockets of industry and what can we do? But I wonder how much you can hold the electorate responsible, because if if, uh, if people really, really wanted change, someone would emerge, you know, I'm the new Green Party person, vote for me. Yeah, I'm going to make it my central thing. And I just... I wonder if really the problem is is that the average person doesn't really have the appetite for that, because climate you could solve climate change through political action, but it would, you know, it would come at a cost, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, it would come at like a personal cost for a lot of people's like a personal cost. And, yeah. You know, could, could you get China to work with you? I mean, if you can't, then it's going to come at you know an economic disadvantage. Yeah. And yeah, totally. yeah. Well, well what, what are you thinking? Uh, well, I mean, you know, it's like uh, there's like fucking um, I don't know, man. It's 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 hard. You you think about COVID, right? It's like mm -hmm. that was kind of like a dress rehearsal, you know, in a lot of ways, and like uh, uh, for just like a big, you know, crisis, a big global mm -hmm. crisis, right? It, it was a fairly minor one. It was a nice dress rehearsal for like how climate change might go, and like at least in this country we fucking failed miserably. Like we, we, we went to that dress rehearsal and we went out on stage and we forgot all of our lines. You know, it's just like, we just uh -huh. totally fucked it. We, we fucked it. Uh, in the words of, uh, of, of, of Kendra Roy, we fucked it. Uh, so like, I don't know. I just think that there will always be, and maybe this is just, you know, me being kind of extra critical of America cause I'm, I'm American and I'm, I'm, I live here, but like, uh, and I see it firsthand, but it, it just, it seems to me that like, People are not gonna 
um, uh, you know, again, it's the companies who are mostly responsible companies and governments, but even individuals like sort of the, the actual kind of coming together and just like, we can get it done sort of aspect of like communities coming together to solve a problem. Like most people are just like going to go, I'm not going to fucking do that, you know? Yeah. Just because they just, they can just decide not to just because they, so someone is who has glasses and ha, you know, uh, and, and watches PBS is telling them, that it's a good idea. You know, they're just, I'm not going to fucking do that. And like, what, at that point, kind of, what can you do? You know what I mean? Like, we're not, we're not China. We can't just say, well, you have to, you know, um, uh, nor should we, you know? So I don't know. Yeah. It just seems, I, again, I'm, now I'm getting kind of hope, uh, hopeless because uh, it's like, well, at that point, what do you do? You know? No, I, I agree with you. It's like, uh, so the, the climate change equivalent of that then is kind of like people walking around with like water up to their ankles saying, well, whatever. Yeah, I mean, yeah, kind of um, you know, I, I think that um, the way I felt with COVID at one point was that no one was going to start taking it seriously until everyone knew someone who had yeah. like, had it bad or died from it. Yeah, and yeah. I'm not sure if we got there. No, um, I and I wonder if that would have made a difference. I wonder if if COVID had been more, you know, more like the strength of, um, you know. Spanish influenza. Yeah, yeah. I, w I wonder if we'd. Yeah, I wonder if things would be really different now, like socially. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's well, it's kind of hard to imagine them, like, I guess being, um, being better. I don't know. It's because I kind of like you know, because I'm a history guy, and I kind of think about like the Black Death, you know, which is obviously kind of the worst <laughs> case scenario. But you know, it's it's kind of uh. uh you know, it's, it's with the black death, it was like all of society, like most like structure, uh, uh, like state structure just collapsed, you know, and it wasn't, you know, and things kind of like without, obviously without that on a long scale, you don't get like the Renaissance and the early modern period. You don't get a lot of the like social and humanism. You don't get that stuff necessarily mm -hmm. or by the same route, but like uh, at the same time in the short term, it was just total societal collapse, you know, it was just misery, you know, and, and despair. Uh, and it's kind of like, um, I don't know. Do you think that like there would have been a January 6th without COVID? Um, yeah, I think there would have been, yeah. uh, to be honest. Yeah, I think so. Do you, do you not? I, I don't actually, I don't, I think okay. it was like, I think, I think without that kind of push of like, oh shit, it's like, you know, it isn't just shit on the internet. It's like something that's like affecting me personally. You know, I think people generally like, like, uh, it's like material conditions, like dictate a lot of this stuff where it's like, uh, it's like people aren't going to actually, you know, uh, participate in social upheaval, you know, whether, uh, necessary and just or incredibly fucking stupid. <laughs> um, uh, uh, if like something isn't, you know, at their door threatening them, you know what I mean? I I think I agree. Is that is that just America though? No, 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 dear no. God, no, no. Yeah, no, no, good, God, point. No. good point. It's kind of hard, yeah. you know. You you are you are from a, a distant and magical land uh, called England. Is that a question? It is. Yeah. I mean, is it, England is the asking me is it a magical land or is it a magical land called England? The magical land. It's it's called England, correct? This far it's, away. Yeah. Now. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, so we, well, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's, uh, it's, well, it's tough for us Americans cause we're so fucking self-centered on our own goddamn country to, you know, that we often don't even, people give me shit for this, uh, for my videos rightly all the time. They're just like, I'll make this grand sweeping statement. It's like, that's only true for America, you idiot. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, we tend to do that. So apologize to everyone, not from America. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, well, I, you know. I suppose I could apologize to everyone not from Britain, but I'd apologize to everyone in Britain as well. Yeah, well, that maybe uh, that that should lead into our second uh, issue, which is uh, uh, our solving. Did all we the solve climate change? change? Say what? Did we solve climate change? Um, I think we did actually. Everybody I don't used numbers, but I think we did. Yeah, yeah. Um, but well, our, well, how about our second? How about our, our second uh, problem? Is is England? How will okay. we solve England? Um, you guys just, you know, give it up and admit that you're English and we'll, we'll put a, a jolly St. George's cross up above you. It won't even be Britain. It'll be England. It'll be England. The whole yeah, England. Yeah. Um, how do we solve England? How do we solve the problem of England? Have you heard of A-bombs? 
Um, <laughs> I, what's, what's your problem with England? There's a, a well, well, jolly big list. Well, why don't we start with the monarchy? Okay. What, yeah, what are your thoughts about the monarchy? I think I know them. But just why don't we the start with the monarchy, the Russian revolutionary said? <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, well, well yeah, what do, you, well, what do you want? I mean, okay, what should what should the monarchy do i guess quietly abdicate over time yeah yeah i mean not not immediately uh well yeah but i mean i don't think it's a crisis or anything i yeah. mean uh yeah it's, you're not you're not for the monarchy then you're not one of the many americans i've met who are like i love the idea of a monarchy no no personally no. i'm not I'm not a big no. fan of the monarchy uh yeah it seems like um antiquated you know, yeah, yeah. Well, it seems yeah. like it was antiquated in 1649. You know what I mean? Oliver Cromwell, he was ahead of his time, wasn't he? Well, you know, uh, he was a bastard. Giving but, people you know, haircuts. Yeah, yeah. There was some, you know, uh, uh, not him necessarily, but uh, some of his underlings, I think, had some, some quite good ideas. You know. Um, okay. Did you, did you ever see the uh, the that that black and white movie? Um, I think I it was called it. Winston Lee. Sorry, what? Um, no, sorry, I was just guessing. What, what uh, was it called? Uh, Winston Lee, like from the seventies, old English uh, uh, movie about the the diggers, the like Puritan radicals in in Surrey. No, it's it's like this. Uh, it's this very strange psychedelic, like early seventies acid movie about these Puritan revolutionaries uh, um, that was shot for you know ten pounds and a bag of salad. Uh, uh, not likely. Yeah, yeah, on a hill somewhere, and then it's uh, really fucking good. Um, uh, yeah, it's uh, I, I I recommend it. I think I think you might dig it. Um, but um, but yeah, it's kind of a similar. You know, it's it's got that kind of like um, uh, sort of you know kind of witchfinder general feel. Like not the my witchfinder general, the the Vincent Price witchfinder general. You know, where it's like sort of kind of schlocky, sort of artsy, sort of low budget. Mm -hmm. You know, English Civil War fair. You know. Um, which is well, one of my particular pet interests, but uh, oh yeah, the the English Civil War in particular. Yeah, yeah. Well, just the, I'm you know the Puritans, and they're kind of on the on the brain now. Today, I, I was uh, in the middle of writing a script about uh, the sex lives of Puritans, or kind of a chapter that was about the sex lives of the Puritans, uh, which was uh, pretty normal. Right. It was just pretty normal, you know. Oh. <laughs> but that's okay. kind of revealing, considering you know that their whole shtick was that they were. I mean. Sort of What's the source material for that? Like, were, were people writing diaries saying I I had sex with my Puritan wife today? But you know what? <laughs> uh, well, there was so uh, what I was mainly looking at was were court records uh, from right. fornication cases. So it was people's like depositions in court about a lot of the times it would happen. What would happen is they would since fornication was against the law. A lot of times, like women would just get pregnant, and and you know someone in town would be like, "What the fuck? You're not married." And they would be like charges we pressed against them, or they would like they would basically you know a magistrate or a, or midwives or something would show up at their house and be like who's the father you know, and sometimes they would tell, sometimes they wouldn't. If they told, usually it was the man who got prosecuted or whatever. But so it was like depositions and stuff, uh, mainly of women talking about about their various fornications. Um, and uh, and then there was also a uh, a book that I was reading called Of Domestical Duties from 1622, where this clergyman was basically talking One about favorites. Oh, my one of my favorites yeah it's, it was a page turner uh but uh there was basically uh, about like how to like be a good husband and be a good wife and a lot of it was like not that like stupid you know what i mean like a lot of it like he like talks like very frankly about like sort of uh, like about sex and stuff and he's just like you should have a lot of sex that's like part of a healthy marriage and you know and so and you know gave and then quoted the bible a bunch but then also talked you know some pretty dirty stuff about you know not like you know how to make your wife come but you know just general sort of like yeah like just just general kind of you know how how sex can like enrich a marriage and intimacy is important and stuff so yeah it's not like this isn't terrible you know expected worse frankly from them right yeah okay that, yeah i wouldn't have expected much i thought it would have been a short chapter on puritan sex but no yeah it's uh, uh well you know it's as long as you know uh basically it's 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 as long as it takes me to ejaculate is pretty much how 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 this chapter will go pages sorry, and pages if, if you let me go off i'll just go on about the puritans uh so uh, i apologize for that well yeah i mean puritans england go on yeah, yeah. Why, why do you why do you hate the monarchy then 
Oh, why do I hate it? I, you know, I, I think it's just kind of ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah. think it's kind of, I think it's just in, inherently undemocratic and, uh, and, and just inherently abhorrent. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's magic blood, you know? It's just stupid. It's just like they don't have magic blood. There's nothing magical about their blood. They're just, you know, the, the king is just some guy. Yeah, it, it, it made a lot more sense when they didn't think that. And the idea of peerage was that you were just a representative family from the nobles, mm. you know, kind of like William Wallace era. Yeah. And you'd all get together and be like, right, we've got to crush this Scottish barony or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. um you know it's yeah i mean it's obviously had its day and um i mean god i remember being in a bar and an italian saying to me oh britain has a monarchy i mean an italian mocking me <laughs> about my government you know back, <laughs> back when they had berlusconi as well but it was a fair point yeah. um it's it's you know it's embarrassing and i think you know, there's a lot of obfuscation around the numbers about how much they bring in in terms of tourism. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, that argument is very shaky to me. Yeah, I just, you know, I just think that, you know, they, they yeah, they can bring in, you know, 100 billion a year, 200, 300. That's, that's not really that much of the economy in the grand scheme of things. And it's just so out of date. Yeah. You know, yeah, I didn't no, see I, see the coronation. I saw bits of it, but it you know it looks like I'm watching uh, a, a period film. Yeah, it looks so stupid. You know. Yeah, um, yeah. It's just that they're just they're just so serious. You know, just yeah. It's just it's 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 unbelievably dumb. You know, um, but yeah, I think ultimately it's just a moral thing for me. It's like is is yeah. nobody's better than anybody else. You know. Uh, and like, so what, uh, you know, and it's like these people and, and the historical aspect too, it's just like these people's ancestors were Tony Soprano. You know what I mean? These, yeah. they, they were Heisenberg. They were just like warlords who gained power through killing and force, you know? So like how, that just seems like, like ultimately that's what it is, right? These people just like seized power. Yeah. It's, it's like, like the appendix of that. It's. You know, because because again, like yeah, that yeah, makes yeah, sense. Exactly. At least. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I think that they're probably still quite popular in Britain. Yeah. Um, so probably not going to go away know. anytime soon. Yeah. I mean, you know, there have been worse monarchies, I suppose. I mean, the Saudi Arabian yeah. monarchy. That's true. There have been worse. <laughs> you know. Yeah. You know, uh, Vlad the Impaler was was pretty bad. Um, well, you know, but at least he was a warlord. At least he was doing things. He was putting himself out there, not yeah. You know, all yeah, the yeah, jowl. exactly. Yeah, he's just putting himself out there. You know, that's he's what you got to do. You've got to living his best life. Yeah, you've got to put yourself out there. Speaking of, this is a, a, a total tangent, but uh, I'm, I'm kind of just curious about your thoughts. Speaking of, of climate change, kind of, um, yeah. and how James Cameron is solving climate change. Um, uh, what did you think of, did you see Avatar 2? Did you like it? I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, I, I watched it the other night. I was, I was kind of curious, but what you might think about it, which it, it sort of, it won me over. I have to say, I didn't care for oh, it, at all, but Avatar 2 kind of won me over. Yeah. What, why? It's, uh, it, it's, it's, the, you know, I thought the first one was very, was kind of spectacle with no substance, you know? Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and the plot was just very derivative. And, and, you know, and of course, you know, Dances with Wolves in Space is kind of the famous, you know, is what Mr. Plinkett said or whatever. And it's pretty apt, you know, but like, uh, uh, but yeah, number two was just kind of a little bit more, um, it was just a little bit more original, you know, and, and had a little bit more going on. You know, it's, it takes place years and years later and, and Sam Worthington and uh, uh, Zoe Saldana have like a bunch of little blue babies and they've all got their own little personalities and stuff and their own aims and everything. And, uh, oh, good. um, you know, <laughs> you know, kids, what, what makes movies better than little kids? Um, uh, no, but you know, they're, they're, it's, it, I don't know. It worked for me. And, and, you know, okay. and, uh, uh, and, uh, Stephen Lang was resurrected in the body of a blue Navi. So he gets like his memories get trans. I'm not representing it the best, but it's, it kind of worked. It kind of worked, you know, cause Stephen Lang is a good actor. It's always good to have him in movies. And, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, you know, 
and like it, it had a good message, you know, it was like, it, it I, I liked the, the sort of uh, the, the frankly kind of, I don't think that James Cameron is necessarily that subversive in of himself, but you, you know, looked at it in a certain light, you could kind of take a bit of a sort of radical environmentalist sort of view from the film in a way that I appreciated. And, and, and a lot of it, since it sort of took place, you know, it's called the way of water and a lot of it takes place at sea and, uh, mm -hmm. and there's a kind of Moby Dick kind of element to it uh, that, uh, that I appreciated and that I liked. And, and it's always, you know, and, and there's kind of this one big, without giving too much away, there's sort of uh, this, this whole sort of second act, third act sequence involving kind of this one big ship that's like hunting them. And, uh, and it sort of has kind of Moby Dick kind of elements to it. And, and honestly, there were some Jaws parallels too, you know, and, and in the score in particular, you kind of heard like, da, 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 da. You kind of heard some Johnny yeah. Williams coming in. And, 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 and you, you know, it's, it's Moby Dick from like the perspective of Moby Dick. Yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right, and it's okay. always, and at the end of, I love the ending of Moby Dick because you get to see whalers die, which is always appreciated. Um, and this was kind of similar, you know what I mean? You just see a bunch of whalers just meet horrible deaths. Uh, uh, which yeah. personally, I'm a you know, I'm I'm a big fan of. I don't want to you know. Poor uh, Queequeg. Yes, poor Queequeg. Yeah, it's poor Queequeg. He he didn't deserve it. In the in the Gregory Peck movie, did you see the 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 1950s film? Yes, yeah, I remember. Yes, yeah, 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 exactly. It's a good one. It's it's a good movie. Uh, Gregory Peck though is like fucking miscast. I mean, he's just like he's good, but he's just like he's too young and hot. You know, it should have been an old Walter Matthau. Yeah, yeah, that would have been sick. Yeah, but um. <laughs> But yeah, it's a good movie. You know, it's it's uh, you know even though it's very you know Queequeg uh, uh, has you know blue eyes and is played by a man with the last name of Reich or something. You know what I mean? But it's right. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Yeah. But, know, about that. Like something was the actor's name. You know, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> you know, there's there's dated aspects. The days. There's dated aspects, but uh, but I thought yeah. I <laughs> Um, so, okay, well, whaling, how, what would you do with, what would you do with whaling? How would you deal with that? Um, that's an uh, easy one, right? That, whaling is an easy one. Uh, 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 violence, uh, force, um, uh, uh piracy, uh, is, is, I think the way to, uh, to deal with whaling. I, th I think that's, that's an easy, easy fix, you know? So have you, have you looked into that? Like, are they, is it, are international waters, uh, is that real? Can you just do whatever you want on the high seas? But then, obviously, if you go into Japanese waters, they'll blast you away. Yeah, Something like that. Probably not. Mm. <laughs> but um, well, I think there's, I think there is something to it because there is this one boat called the Sea Shepherd, I believe, uh, that that legitimately will like sink whalers. Like they don't kill anybody, but they do. Like they will like ram a whaling ship and sink it, and right. they like, get away with it somehow. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Mm, okay. But no, I think I think that's generally like you know I think that's the way to go about it is like is 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 just force you know, um, but I'm but I'm 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 I I have, admittedly quite strong opinions about this kind of thing. Well, do you would you apply that then to other problems like climate force? change? Could you solve that with force? No. I mean, no, you could uh, you could take over the world and just be like, no one's driving a car today. Yeah, I, I've yeah. got the button right in front of me. No one's getting in their cars. Yeah. No, I no, I wouldn't. I, I, wouldn't like that. I would. That would. That's a bridge too far. That's too far. Okay, that's a little right. too far. Yeah, I wouldn't use. I would only use force to protect whales, but any other, you know, although technically, I guess, since stopping climate change would also protect whales, then. I don't know. Maybe I am just a horrible authoritarian. Maybe I'm just, you know, a total piece of shit who, you know, wants to use force. I don't no, know. I mean, I think, um, no, I, I, it, there's kind of a logic to there. It's um, it's like I remember Sean Locke. I don't know if you're familiar with him. I remember him. He's a, He was a comedian. Um, I remember him saying that he doesn't agree with the death penalty unless it's for double parking. Because <laughs> then no one would do it. Because it's you know no one would risk that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas you know like a crime of passion or whatever, you know, fifty years of prison or death, whatever. But death penalty for double parking, let's say, I don't know. Yeah, you could, you could have something equally disproportionate for whaling. That's true. Um, That's true. 
That's true. I don't, I don't think that, well, I don't think it's like, I mean, the death penalty though is so like gross and like, no, I, I yeah, I, I no, know. No, 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 I, 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 know I know it's a joke, but like, but, but just generally, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't, it wouldn't be the death penalty. Cause that's like kind of, that's, that's not awesome. Like piracy, you know, like Russell Crowe, like sword fighting a man, you know, on a whaling ship and ting, 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 you know, that would be an appropriate death for a whaler because it's in the heat of action, you know, and because it's badass. You know what I mean? Oh. So I think just generally badassery should like figure quite strongly legally um, in, in terms of prosecution of, of, of whalings and, and people who kill whalers, you know? So maybe then these pirates should have like nunchakas and stun guns. So it's all like non-lethal, like, like fire foam bullets or whatever. And yeah. Like, that. like, mm. like Batman. Yeah. Like Batman. Like they don't, you know, and then, then, you know, NYPD go on board and it's like a bunch of whalers all tied up in a big huddle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, and then, you know, yeah. And then the, the the pirates are there and Gary Oldman talks to them for a second and then he looks away and says something and he looks back and they're all gone. And he's got a different glass of gin in his hand in this shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah I, th I think we generally just solved, solved whaling. What about... Uh, uh um how would you solve hollywood the problem of hollywood well what is the problem you know sex pests uh money greed um money mm -hmm. pests uh sex money um uh sequelitis take your pick uh yeah okay well i i guess like the the I guess there's a myriad of problems there, ranging from legal to cultural. I don't know. Um, I mean, in terms of, I guess, the sex best thing, you've got to get to a point where that just isn't acceptable behavior. That's where it's, that's why it's flourished is because it was going on and everyone knew and no one gave a shit. It was part yeah. of it. Yeah. And I guess that's changing over time, which is good. But in terms of, you know, sequelitis and stuff i mean that's here to stay that you can't change hollywood like that that's like changing someone's spine <laughs> well you it's know just regurgitation that's all it is i mean well, you know, some of hollywood movies are really good but yeah i mean well the predator you know could uh, the predator the predator could could, rip, could change someone's spine yeah um <laughs> yeah, but then, but then, then they, you know, then they would have sort of like, you know, basic body failure, and that would be it. I mean, That's if you true. if you stopped Hollywood from remaking stuff or or doing sequels, I think that would it wouldn't be Hollywood anymore. Yeah, it would just be. Yeah, it would just be low budget. You know, it would just be a thousand low budget movies uh, uh, made by uh, people like you and me. Um, which will be the worst thing? Well, I mean, we can, you know, Hollywood's not stopping me from making shit. No. Is it? I don't think so. Well, the, so since you, would you, uh, 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 something that, that, uh, um, that you know, uh, some of the, the people watching at home may have picked up on, we, we've both made uh, movies for not a lot of money. Um, uh, would you, um, would you do it again? Yeah. Would you, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Kind of another similar movie to collaborator, like on a similar scale. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think to be honest, I would have to have the idea first, and I don't have any ideas I want to make into a movie right now. Uh, I mean, you know, if someone came to me and went, "You've got ten million dollars, make this movie," I might might be interested, but um, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I would do it again, but I can't say how or whether it would be like collaboration or not. I mean, it, probably it would have to be low budget. Yeah. But in terms of, you know, mood and atmosphere and stuff, I'd probably do something completely different. Yeah, for sure. But do you, well, uh, you say, uh, do you have like any ideas cooking right now that, that you can talk about or are they all, uh, they all confidential? I don't have any ideas right now that I'm actually working on. I'm, kind of writing a novel but i've been writing kind of writing a novel for about 15 years <laughs> nice. so I, you know, I take that with a pinch of salt yeah yeah um no yeah no. Well, i mean I, I you know 
I, I, I don't really think of myself as a, a filmmaker, to be honest. I'm just sort of like a weirdo who uses film for trying to tell a story, kind of. I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're uh, for I mean somebody who's not a filmmaker. You are you are good at filmmaking. I mean, you know what I mean. Like, uh, you're uh, um, yeah. I mean, your videos are always like super well cut and stuff, and um, uh, and and your sets are always super moody and atmospheric, and um, and also you. you know you at least like on YouTube and stuff. And I mean, you, you could say that with your film too. But like, I think at least on YouTube, like you you clearly uh, make what you want to make, right? Like. Yeah, you don't. You know, it's like I, I think a lot of uh, the people who who make videos on 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 YouTube are fairly obsessed about their self image. You know, um, yeah. And uh, uh, I I don't get that sense from you um, uh, because you don't sort of necessarily make you know uh, the shit that is like you don't like imitate the most popular shit that you've done. You kind of just like, oh, I feel like doing this this week, and then you go off and do that. And I think the yeah. results kind of speak for themselves. Yeah, that's I. That's pretty much what I do. I think that um, you know, part of the a big part of the appeal for doing YouTube for me was, um, I, I mean, I'm self-employed. Obviously, I live and die at the behest of Dad and Google, but. <laughs> I, you know, I, they leave me alone and I basically work for myself and I'm independent and I can, yeah, I can do that. Like, oh, this week I'll talk about Teflon. Yeah. <laughs> if I want to. No. Yeah. yeah. No, I, and I, I, I think, no. I think that, um, I think that there is an audience for authenticity, you know, without people like having to say to themselves, like, I'm going to be authentic. I think there is an audience for just, you know, like, yeah, I mean, like, uh, I've got shit teeth and I'm bald. And, like, sometimes I can barely string a sentence together. But I'm, I'm myself. Yeah. I'm not selling you anything. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, th I think that there's a lot of people on YouTube who are just really casual and aren't that bothered about who in particular they're watching. They just kind of watch what they're served. But I think, like, the, there is an audience for, you know, um, not just the same thing over and over. Yeah, no. Why totally. am I talking about YouTube? No, I, no, I don't know. I mean, but well, we could solve that problem next. But no, I mean, I, I mean, I think it's interesting. Uh, well, um, yeah, I, I, I think there is too. I mean, it's like, uh, uh, and and not even kind of an audience for it, but I think it's like, or not even in terms of an audience, but I think there's it, it's it 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 kind of reminds me of of what YouTube kind of like used to be, you know, uh, in the good old days. Yeah. Uh, no, but just like generally, you know, I mean, I think. 10, 15 years ago, you know, YouTube channels were just like a place to post shit, you know, it's just like for whatever, you know, it was just, uh, yeah. um, and, uh, and I think you kind of like keep that, that tradition kind of alive and well. Uh, uh, whereas I think, uh, a lot of, you know, I, I think there's so many people now who like, Oh, I got to do a second channel. You know, if I put this on the main channel, that'll be weird. And, you know, uh, whereas you don't give a fuck, uh, in a way that I, I totally admire, uh, but you know what I mean? It's just, it's, it's, uh, you know, there's, there's some very restrictive, you know, um, uh, people can, can be very restrictive in terms of their genre, in terms of their output, uh, to their own detriment. I think and it's like, no wonder these people are fucking miserable. But then I wonder if, you know, actually I'm just being e even more cynical than them and, you know, mm -hmm. not giving a fuck and, and just sort of posting what I want and all of that is like, maybe that's just my brand. And then, oh, it's brands all the way down. It's brands all the way down. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. I, hey, there. I think there'd be worse brands to have. You know. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. I mean, I think, I think that if you got into, or well, for me, you know, I got into YouTube. Like I said, a bit of independence, and you know, I can do filmy stuff, and I can play with a camera and things like that. And if it got to the point where I was playing someone else and my whole content was about what can i do that is acceptable for sponsors i think that would just become like a, a horrible job yeah, and I, yeah i might as well just work for someone else in you know in a job and have that job security and yeah yeah yeah, yeah like I, I can see how you know you could get into youtube and become successful and still get really depressed from it yeah if you've got that mindset I, th I think a lot of I think a lot of YouTubers are like, 
I don't know if depressed is the right word because that kind of like makes it seem maybe clinical. But I think I think I think they've I I think they're like very. I think they've got a very complicated relationship with their own sort of uh, creation. And I think a lot of them are, and I, and I, I, I'm sorry, everybody, I probably feel like a broken record because I, I said this in the, the, my, my latest video about Ravenous, but I think a lot of them are kind of addicted to their own celebrity yeah. uh, in a way that's, that's uh, basically just a, a gambling addiction. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, uh, uh, you know, the way that Creator Studio was set up is just like, you know, congratulations, you know, you have won, you know, or like yeah. this video didn't do well, hmm, you know, frowny phase or whatever. And it's got, I got this very folksy kind of like, summer picnic kind of vibe, but it's fucking, it's Vegas. You know what I mean? It's, it's, you know, pull the fucking thing and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and see if you win. Uh, um, and I think they, they, I think that's very intentional. Uh, I think, I think somebody at, I, I, I think they're, you know, I don't think they're, they're, they're evil and going like, ah, how yeah. can I addict them? But I do think that like somebody at YouTube is very specifically thinking like psychologically, this is gonna like, you know, encourage these people to like post more, and post more marketably and make us more money. You know, like I think that's like a pretty conscious decision. I, I agree because they, you can get so much from Creator Studio in terms of specific stats. You can break things down into, you know, like how many women from 50 to 55 years old in New Zealand watch this last video compared to that, you know, yeah. you can really get a lot. Shout of out to content. Esther and Agnes. <laughs> Shout out to <laughs> Esther and Agnes. All right, see you at the Barbie ladies. <laughs> Um, but so you can get so much information about how to improve engagement and all of that, but they are extremely vague when it comes to, uh, what you can't talk about or what will get you demonetized. Yeah. Um, you know, because, well, I suppose historically, not just YouTube, I think probably really every, every internet company with, you know, a public facing bit, um, they don't want to tell you the exact rules of moderation or of self-censorship because then people will get around them yeah um so yeah i think it's tell it's very telling that they want to give you that that much information yeah do you um, uh do you look at analytics a lot no i haven't looked at analytics in about five years <laughs> oh, good for you i um my my wife christina uh does all my all the back end of youtube she does all the uploading because i used to I, I used to feel, you know, even before I got any sort of traction on YouTube, uh, you know, before it could get to my head, I kind of knew that I was dealing with like a toxic substance. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like a balance of you don't want to become someone who can't read comments or can't look at criticism. And you don't want to be someone who's looking at it all the time or who's seeing, you know, the inevitable criticism and yeah. taking it to heart and yeah yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I mean i would i used to upload my videos like like that like, upload like that. <laughs> my eye kind of closed like try and like blur out because yeah. otherwise i i would go like oh why is that one oh why's that one got four thousand views more than i thought or why is that not one done well and then i just yeah. got it down a, a rabbit hole and yeah i think i'm very lucky in that I, my wife does all that for me so yeah, well, that's very nice of Christina, uh, and uh, and if nice you, uh, and um, and Christina is uh, is is uh, fucking hilarious and uh, and very charming and charismatic on uh, your new podcast, Dead Air, uh, available on YouTube's everywhere. YouTube's everywhere. Yes, YouTube's everywhere. every Sunday. Every, every Sunday. Um, yeah, it's the yeah. new Succession, and Barry. It's it's the new versions of that. Is Dead Air? Uh, I've just just Christina. started watching Barry actually. Oh really? Oh, it's so good! Oh my god, are you enjoying it so yeah. far? Yes, I just finished season one, and uh, I I don't love it right now. But I the the last thing I watched all the way through was Fubar. So coming off that, it's like oh, oh my god, god, there's things happening. Yeah, yeah, acting. Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, yeah. I I really Doug Barry. I I uh, um my fiance and I we um. Uh, kind of like blasted through it in like a week and a half. Um, and yeah. Uh, yeah, it's definitely, it, it definitely changes. It starts off kind of as one thing that's like pretty conventional. I mean, you know, that first season is classic, you know, I mean, I actually tried watching it 
uh, a couple years ago, I think. Uh, and it was kind of like mm -hmm. another hitman thing. I don't know. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, even Stephen Root can't necessarily keep me, you know, engaged in this. But uh, but then, um, you know, my, my partner and I, we we, uh, we went through it. And, and yeah, I just fell in love with it. I mean, just the, uh, um, yeah, just for whatever reason, the, the uh, uh, yeah, the, the juxtaposition of the, the hitman world and the vapid, you know, trying to make it in Hollywood world. It's just really golden, but it's but it's it's conventional, right? Like that, it, it it has sort of a conventional structure at least at first, but yeah. it kind of like in the later seasons, it kind of grows into a pretty sort of uh, uh, not abstract. It's kind of a lightly surreal, um, um, but but quite satirical type of uh, thing that it sort of evolves into. But I, I don't want to give anything away because there's definitely some twists and turns. But uh, but okay. I, I I for sure really really enjoyed it. You know. Okay. Well, yeah. I will watch more, and um, yeah, I liked it so far. Yeah, it, it uh, well, it kind of tickles, I think, the the Better Call Saul, Breaking Bad itch. You know what I mean? Where it's kind of the, the life of crime and sort of the, the hidden life and the and and the sort of mainstream of the real life. You know, or or you know, it's like uh, where main character is kind of keeping a secret. You know, um, and um, uh, you know, and that secret is always kind of like in danger of like coming out at any moment. You know, and uh, and that's where a lot of the sort of suspense and everything comes from. And, um, um, and, and uh, it's a very like, I love how, how it's a very kind of set piece oriented show in kind of a similar way that like Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul were, where it'll be like an episode just focusing on like one thing, you know, mm -hmm. um, like there's a, uh, there's a great uh, episode in, in one of the later seasons where um, uh um, uh, not, not a, a, a huge spoiler by, by any means, not even a light one necessarily, but, uh, it's where Barry kind of like is taking a hit out on this guy who he thinks is just this schlubby dude. And it's kind of like, um, uh, and, and he arrives at his house and, uh, and he ends up like talking to the guy and, uh, and the guy's just like smoking a weed, weed and like in his sweatpants and is like, and just like kind of looks like, you know, a schlubby pothead asshole. And then like Barry like follows him into a room and it's full of Taekwondo trophies and like pictures of him, like, like winning Taekwondo tournaments. And then Barry's like, Oh, and then it just turns into this amazing fight scene. You know, it's like, becomes this huge fucking like epic. But anyway, uh, oh, I don't I know, it's, good. It's, it's good shit. Um, good. um I, I also, I really loved, uh, your, your, uh, thoughts on, on the last of us too, I, which I like agreed quite strongly with. And I did not see, like uh, that opinion being echoed very much on on the internet um like that yeah, that last episode was like very yeah very I, I did not like it i did not like it so what was the sort of majority opinion then was it either people loved it or people hated it i think it was generally um uh, generally pretty well ac uh, accepted yeah if i was right. like people generally were very pleased with how it ended. Um, but yeah, it right. was, uh, okay. but yeah, I don't know. It, it just seemed like it very, you know, like, um, uh, yeah, like that final shootout just did not do no. it for me. Yeah, um, and the cloning of the game was just, I just didn't, yeah, it just didn't do it for me at all. It's very inconsistent, that show, you know. It, it's, yeah, it seemed very limp at the end, especially, but it wasn't really just the end that lost it for me. It was... Yeah. I, yeah, I'm trying to remember it. It was, um, you know, it felt kind of like, you know, wading through a stream. It was very slow at times yeah. when it, it didn't need to be. And then other times it kind of rushed stuff. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I, I kind of, uh, I, I sort of felt bad for the cannibals, honestly. Um, I liked them. It, you know, there was like, I don't know. I just found it, I found it very rich that, uh, uh, you know, Joel and Ellie have gone across the whole United States, just like murdering that, just like, just, just, just plowing through, you know, yeah. filling graveyards, you know what I mean? Like just murdering so many people just without a second thought. And then it's just like, all of a sudden there's some, you know, some people in the mountains, in the Rocky mountains in winter are indulging in a little bit of cannibalism. And then all of a sudden it's like, Oh my God, you know, you monster. Fuck. Like who gives a shit? Yeah. It's the apocalypse. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, I, I really. Apocalypse happens. Mean. First thing I'm going to do is taste man meat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Man, so, man um, flesh. Man flesh. Yeah, or or lady flesh, whatever. Or lady um, flesh. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 No, I. You know. Yeah. Give it a try. Um, yeah, yeah. Try anything once. 
Yeah. Mm. Would you feel weird about, even in a survival situation, would you feel weird about resorting to cannibalism? Even not in a survival situation, I wouldn't feel that weird about it. You wouldn't feel that weird about it? I, I mean, um, no. I mean, you know, you do what you do. You do what you have to. I mean, I, I guess, like, would, would the idea of the meat itself disgust me? I don't think so. Yeah. Would the idea of, you know, running somebody down with a hoe and whacking their head in and then, you know, skinning them and all of that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that'd be that'd be a bit of a bummer. Yeah, that would be a bit of a but, bummer. Why a hoe, specifically? Just, just that's what the first thing that came to hand. <laughs> the first thing that came to hand would yeah. be the hoe. <laughs> yeah. Well, I imagine, I imagine a hoe's got a bit of an advantage because no one's going to expect the guy with a hoe is going to be the psycho. Bang. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah, where's that slasher movie, you know? Yeah, they oh, call it the meat yeah. gardener. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's the gardener of souls. That would actually be a pretty sick. That would be honestly. What if it was like it was like, yeah, like the hoe maker, and it's like a seventies grindhouse horror movie made for ten pounds in a bag what, of cabbage. What, 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 oh God, it's the hoe maker. The hoe maker's just walked in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's like and and you know and and it's like played by an old man who uh, uh, right played by, by Peter Peter Cushing plays the hoe maker, and he's this like. <laughs> And he's and he's just this like rural like East Anglian farmer. Oh, I'm just a farmer. Oh, you know. And 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 uh, but he's like got he like has a garden of bodies, you know. And uh, and then and then you know uh, whatever hot young, you know, British actor in the seventies, Eric Idle has to you know <laughs> solve the mystery. Hot, hot young Eric Idle, <laughs> there is as a love interest. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah exactly. you could have you could have a whole thing then of him him he kills people he plants them and then he grows a seed out of them and then he eats that seed yeah yeah exactly or something you know yeah, and, yeah. and then takes on their knowledge <laughs> yes yeah so, yeah yeah he he's, he's he grows onions or whatever oats whatever they grow in in England <laughs> oats yeah <laughs> and oats. bottles of gin <laughs> bottles of um, gin. Yeah, but he like serves it to the village people. You know what I mean? He has guests over and he serves the, and they're like, what is this fertilizer? Like they, nobody can figure out like why his props are so good. Yeah, yeah. And and what, and then what? They also getting like nosebleeds after a while and he's like laughing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, the homemaker starring. Yeah. King. Yeah. Um, I love it. I think that, um, I think that it would need a comedic sidekick, though. Who could that be? I'm thinking John Candy. The wrong era. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, uh, John Candy as the chef. You know, the chef. You know, the, the chef's the one that takes these plants. He makes these lovely sausages. Yeah, yeah. For the and, and makes a bunch of puns. You know, just a bunch of quippy, quippy kind of cannibal puns. Yep. Um, yeah. 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 No, Something for sure. I think that. this is your next film. Yeah. Probably Everyone can't start for. I, I think I can't start, uh, I can't probably cannot star Peter Cushing um, unless you are able to find uh, a good, you know, digital effects artist. Yeah, maybe he could, maybe he could like wear, a, like Peter Cushing's character could like wear his hoodie, like up like that all the time. <laughs> okay. Get someone around the eyes or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, just wears could be like, it was very brave of you putting Peter Cushing into that burger. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, it'd be perfect. It'd be perfect. Uh, look at us solving all the world's problems, staying perfectly on topic. Uh, I'm Peter Cushing. Yeah, <laughs> I think there's a um, there's a, been a couple of uh, we haven't we've been we've been live for an hour, George, and we've been remiss. Or I've Wait, been this is going out. It, what? Sorry. No, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, so I've uh, been remiss because there are a couple people have, have have sent in uh, some some money, some super chats. So I'm I'm let's let's address them real quick. Let's answer all their burning questions. Uh, Hip Tang, checkmate Lincolnites. That's not a question. <laughs> That's not a question. Uh, question for George: How do you keep your sanity whilst watching Revolution? Um, I suppose sort of trying to understand like where in Kings Lynn. <laughs> They shot it, um, and like I suppose, fantasizing about the idea of them shooting this in Kings Lynn, uh, which is a small town in Britain, is definitely not 
Boston or wherever it was meant to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Revolution wasn't that bad. It was all right. It, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. I, I kind of, uh, I've heard, uh, I actually have not heard bad things. You know, I've heard it's, it's like, you know, I like the idea of like the American colonists, because obviously this is not something that happens in like film very often. But I like the idea of like the Americans being like skeevy and shitty. Because because in most movies, they're just like, you know, Mel Gibson with a flag, you know. <laughs> dun, 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 you know. Yeah, I mean, it, it is... Uh, I suppose it does have that aspect, but it, it's definitely pro-American. I mean, you know, yeah. they were right, weren't they? You know, freedom and liberty for all, not the blacks. Yeah. Yes, yes, for all. No, for yeah. all the women. Yeah, for all. For all the um, uh, question for George: Can can hip Georgia? Can hip tang save the world? I mean, surely it can. But you know, can the world produce the quantity of hip tang needed for that? <laughs> Is the problem? Are there people prepared to, you know, give up their guns and butter to produce enough hip tang? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Exactly. I, you know, their saltpeter and their pins. Um, Atun Shea, that's me. The one movie that should be remade is Thirteen Days because a lot has been declassified since two thousand with the release of the JFK tapes. I have not, uh, not seen Thirteen Days. I do not. I'm. I don't know that movie. Is that the one with uh, about the Cuban Missile Crisis? Are you asking me? I don't know. I, I'm, I, I don't know. I'm asking everyone. Uh, all, all 187 people watching. What a crowd. What numbers, George? What numbers we're pulling? These are, these are the types of numbers that, you know, that, that change uh, lives. Um, thank you for the 20 bucks. Super sticker. Uh, JP, uh, uh, hey, Andy, would you take a stab at the messenger of the story of Joan of Arc again? There's so much awesomeness in that film. There is awesomeness in that film. I love that movie. I don't know if I'll take a stab at that again. I, I, I kind of, I, I, I don't think I'm a very good movie reviewer and I kind of stopped for like two years because I don't think I'm very good at it. And then I, my ravenous one was the only one was the, is, is that was about much more than just the movie. So, so that's why I kind of went back to that. Uh, but, uh, but I, I don't really, I, I'm not sure I will ever make movie reviews ever again, but I love that movie. Have you seen that film, George? No, I am going to watch it though after uh, your video. Was the Donner Party? Was the were they right to do the cannibalism stuff? Oh, the Donner Party? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I had heard that people had told them they were too late in the season to be traveling, and they should. Yeah, that was that was yeah. a thing. Um, uh, yeah, no, they 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 bad. Dis Mistakes were made. We'll just say that. But uh, but no, that was like a purely like, you know, that that was a and real talk. You know, that was a purely survival situation. I mean, you know, although there was some real fucked up shit that, that they did. There was some like very what? Fucked up shit. Like eating babies. Like straight up. Like oh, eating right. babies. Yeah. How much meat is on a baby? You know, enough to make like a difference, what? apparently. So, I mean, the way I always mentioned it was, you know, spring comes the the snow thaws and then it's just like one last donna man mr donna like sat there with a, <laughs> yeah. sat there with a you know a human leg yeah 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 um, what, what what actually how did that end did they did they get out and then walk to town or what so they, yeah they weren't like actually I don't, well they couldn't walk they were like super weak but i think it was like um right. uh, they were like not actually like that far uh from where they needed to be it was that it was the um uh or they weren't that far from like, you know, uh, um, uh, from civilization. They just like got stuck. Like the snows were just like, like they almost made it, but then the snows came yeah. and they just got stuck. And then, and then they all starved and they like were too weak to like move. But basically what like somebody, it's been a while since I've read uh, my books on it. So I'm sure somebody will tell me that I'm half remembering this and getting shit wrong. So I apologize. Uh, uh, and please do tell me that I'm an idiot. Uh, but uh uh, but I believe somebody like sort of made a run for it or like somebody like went ahead, like after everybody had started eating the dead, they like, they went and they like found people and they like brought them back. And I know there was like this one, there's this one image from this one book I read about it that has always stayed with me that it's like the, the guy who went back, got like a bunch of like a rescue party and, um, uh, and, and they like came across this pit, like in the snow that basically like their, uh, the, their fire, the survivor's fire had like burned down to the ground. So it was this like this pit of, of ice and snow leading down to this like cavern. And they just like 
went over the lip. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm doing the fucking like director thing. I'm like doing a camera move, <laughs> but like they, they, uh, they, they like they like looked over the lip, and it was just like covered in blood. And they were, and it was this um. Uh, this like mother and her like, two like small children under like six years old, just like gnawing on like people's like limbs and shit. And uh, and apparently the kids like, draw them like their sandals. Yeah, yeah. And, like apparently, literally, just like you know, like fucking uh, Lance Hendrickson and Dead Man. Just I'm gonna taste right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, um, uh, and like the the kids were of course like never the same. There's like stories about that, them in their like 40s, you know, just being like really creepy and like and and with like the thousand yard stare and they just like never got over it you know understandably right like i probably yeah, would. yeah. although uh what well, uh, um uh, i think you might have misheard me i was uh, curious uh uh not about ravenous though of course i'm always down to talk ravenous uh um uh the, the 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 person the film that this person mentioned was the messenger the story of joan of arc the uh uh luke Besson, mila jovovich uh kind of post braveheart historical epic do you ever see that one I don't think so. It's quite good. It's quite good. I, I, I would recommend that one as well. Okay. Um, yeah, it's kind of like schizophrenic, yeah, like Joan of Arc, kind of surreal, yeah, kind of weird. I did. I have seen Oh, you it. saw that one? Um, well, I've seen a movie, a Joan of Arc movie. I mean, how many can there be? But I don't remember <laughs> anything useful. So, I mean, I've, if I have seen it, it's 20 years ago. Yeah, well, there's quite a few. I mean, there's, well, there's The Passion of Joan of Arc, of course, the, the, that like classic silent film and... Um, do you like silent movies, George? Do you like watch, you know, silent movies on the road? Uh, I mean, no, I, I wouldn't say I watch them. I mean, I like them, but yeah. I, I would have to be in a very particular mood to watch a silent movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah, I, I saw a, um, uh, a, a, a live score of... Um, <clears throat> like a musical performance live score of, of the sound movie uh, Haksan Witchcraft Through the Ages, which is a 1922 Danish movie that's like a semi-documentary docudrama about uh, the history of like the witch trials um, that was fucking awesome. And it was in this old, so there's this neighborhood called the Bywater in New Orleans, which is where all the hipsters live. And um, uh, there's this like decrepit old theater that's like 100 years old and it's not been re renovated and has no air conditioning. And it's fucking hot here. So we were like sweltering, me and my two buddies. We went and we saw Haksan, Witchcraft Through the Ages, in like 90 degree heat, um, uh, uh, quite stoned, um, with this like less satanic like live score. It was pretty fucking awesome. But um, yeah, uh, but it's it's a neat little movie. It's got like, uh, you know, there's like at the beginning, they're like, there's like these title cards about like the torture devices and they'll like show them being demonstrated on like the director's assistant and shit. And it's like fun. Of course. And then they're like, yeah, and then they'll sort of like uh, 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 like reenact like certain things, and there's like little sort of cinematic like interludes, you know, where there'll be like the story of a witch in Germany, and you know, and she's like this old lady and who's like you know cooking frogs and stuff, and uh, 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 yeah, it's it's pretty sick. It's pretty, and then, and then there are these like you know super homoerotic scenes where like this like this this monk comes to another monk and is just like you know father i've had impure thoughts and he's like take your whipping and then he like whips him with his bare back and then and then there's a close up of the monk's face he's like <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> they knew what they were doing you know what i mean uh, they knew what they were doing yeah it's a great little movie oh well, it sounds good yes <laughs> no it's a good one um all right so let's see what other what other problems we can solve here um uh i mean we've already solved many of the world's problems yeah, I mean, we're concentrating on big problems. You know, all the world's problems could be small problems. You know, that's true. That's true. How do you solve? Um, how do you solve getting through airports? How do you? You know, that's boring and long. That is. How boring. do you solve that? Well, you know what? I think the pretty pretty simple solution, at least in the short term, is uh, is TSA precheck. Um, right. Because Al Qaeda can't afford the eighty dollar fee. Well, well, it's, it's not that they can't afford it, it's that they don't think it's economical. Yeah, yeah, that's the genius of, of PreCheck, is that yeah. Al-Qaeda's not going to cough up $80. Problem solved, you know but what can, I mean? Like, but can, can, can you know, non-middle-class white people, can, do they apply for PreCheck? Uh, I mean, is, is, it, is it not, is it not going to be like, ooh, Sorry, you've applied for TSA PreCheck, but you've got a Muslim-sounding name, so that's um, yeah, old. yeah, that's that's true. That might be that 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 might be a thing. That might be a thing. yeah. Is that is it not you know protected by inbuilt racism? 
I would imagine that that would be horrifically unconstitutional because that's sort of the thing, the nice thing about America. Well, I know, but like, that's sort of the nice thing about America is that like, we at least pretend to be fair. You know what I mean? So like, and that, and sometimes like, if you tell a lie often enough, it, it, it becomes true, you know? So like we, so there's sometimes like when we're pretending to be fair and like, you know, virtue signaling to use, uh, you know, the culture warrior term, uh, then we actually end up doing some good, you know? Um, I mean, I, I suppose going back to comparing it with Britain, it's more moral to pretend to be fair than just be like, ah, then Queen Liz, she's the best. Mm -hmm. I'd say that's probably fair. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm generally like, I would rather someone be like, have their heart in the right place and just be like a horrific hypocrite than just be like unrepentantly evil, personally. I mean, I, I think that, you know, even if you look at it really cynically and the whole kind of like, you know, you can achieve too. You can, you know, anyone can become president one day. Yeah. If that, that sort of, you know, if you think of that as cynical and that's just there to make people work hard for nothing, well, at least you've sort of brainwashed them into thinking that that's, that, you know, meritocracy is a good thing, even if it's not achievable. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than just, you know, I don't know, it's way better than China or something where it's just, you know, you are a tiny cog. That's it. Yeah, yeah. No, that's true. That's true. I mean, it's like, well, I mean, I don't know. It's 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 like we are. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the thing about like, you know, liberal democracy. You know what I mean? Is that it does like have um, drawbacks. Well, it does have drawbacks, but it also has like like things that are good. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's it's not that you know it's 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 kind of unfair to just be like. I guess that's why I don't really have a whole lot of patience for. Uh, um, uh, I don't know how you know how 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 necessarily deep in the the lingo you are, George. You don't you don't strike me as necessarily the type. But uh, but uh, do you know what tankies are? No. Yeah, it's there's no reason you should, but they're basically like uh, 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 apologists for authoritarian communist regimes. Uh, right, um, right, and, right. And and, and sometimes it can be, you know, uh, I I I can find them a little bit exasperating, you know, because they uh, that they, they sort of tend to sort of because um, uh, a lot of these places, like you know, the Soviet Union, you know, it's like has it been sort of demonized you know, through Cold War propaganda into like this like incredibly evil monstrous thing, which, you know, may not exactly line up for the reality. Sure. But at the same time, you know, this was a very repressive, you know, authoritarian yeah. state, you know what I mean? And, and, uh, and sort of, uh, I think there's some like, you know, I, I, I think, uh, uh, yeah, sometimes, you know, like uh, but democracy is good, right? Like, I, I don't think that's like a terribly, uh, controversial statement. Anyway, we're, no, we're getting. I, into I, I, yeah. I think it's it, it's kind of the key component. I think you know you could have, you know, you could have a capitalist democracy that's very capitalist, like this one. You could have yeah. one that is what what in America they might call socialist, socialist capitalism, like in yeah. in Denmark. But it's not really socialism. It's still capitalism. No. It's just yeah, got a welfare yeah. aspect to it. You can have you can have those things. Yeah. You know, the democracy is the key part. Yeah, I mean, yeah, generally, it's our own pretty, hope. Yeah, yeah, it generally does seem like like a pretty pretty good you know way to sort of get everybody's voice heard or whatever. See, this is sort of an and you know, and this gives me another excuse to talk about Puritans. You know, is uh, uh, is another thing. You know, I mean, I I I, I don't know if you so you well, I guess um, uh, you've seen uh, you know, there's no reason for you to have you know be that familiar with my stuff and i think i was a fan of yours before you were a fan of mine but uh have you seen like uh much of my puritan stuff because i know you're like into the civil war stuff right yes no puritans are a bit kind of uh beyond my remit i'm into more like sure. warry stuff but but tell me about puritans sure with pleasure george so <laughs> yes. uh um uh so so i'm from a small little town in massachusetts uh it's not that mm -hmm. little but it's it is a small town called um uh, an exurb called uh wayland and in the 17th century, it was the site of Sudbury Plantation, uh, which was basically um, a very small little frontier town that um, uh, where, like a lot of other Puritan towns in Massachusetts, it was set up with a town meeting style government. So basically, a town meeting is a type of direct democracy. 
Um, mm -hmm. So essentially, you know, Sudbury and Whalen never had an, a mayor or any, you know, sort of like there were no like leader. There was no leader of town. You know, it was never like one person. It was it was a board of selectmen that were elected annually. And then basically like any other posts were filled like as needed. Right. So it was like, okay, we need someone to like mend the fences. So be like, all right, who you, you're, oh, you know, Robert, you're pretty good at mending fences. Why don't we put you in the town book as official fence mender, you know, and then okay. he would do that for two years, you know, and, and, um, but, you know, basically this town meeting style government was uh, basically once a month, uh, a little boy named John Goodenow would, would beat the drums and everybody in town would gather at the meeting house and they would like, and everybody uh, would, as long as you were a white English person, English man, uh, would be able to vote on uh, what was going to happen in town, right? So basically like everybody who was a, an English man uh, had, you know, had, had, was eligible for voting. And, and there was like hierarchies in Puritan society, like there was like church membership was a big deal. Uh, cause that was when you were like guaranteed salvation and stuff like that. And they generally had more privileges than, than non-church members. But, um, uh, but, uh, but, you know, it was, it was localized direct democracy. And, uh, and in the script I'm writing, I, I mentioned how in the first 40 years of the history of, of my hometown, um, uh, they, uh, the, the, the town records never once mentioned the King, the parliament, the Privy Council, the Justices of the Peace, and only very occasionally mention the General Court in Boston, which was like the immediate like uh, uh, governmental body that they answered to. So it's like kind of interesting, you know, I, I, I think it's like, you know, um, uh, and I've discussed this many times, you know, in, in my videos about the topic, including my video in defense of Puritanism that, you know, there's like, there's a lot of really fucked up aspects of their culture and, and, uh, you know, and, and, and it's not like, uh, uh, they did nothing wrong and their system was perfect, but it's kind of interesting how like, you know, this, um, uh, and, you know, they still have town meetings and boards of select men, mm -hmm. uh, like people now in Wayland today, right. That's still the, the form of government and it's still direct democracy. So, but it's, and, uh, but now of course they let women, you know, speak too. Uh, but that's it when it all went wrong. That's when it all went wrong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, nah, you know, take that feminist. Um, but uh, uh, that reminds me of John Batista in the second Knives Out movie. Is I love boobs. You know, take that feminist. Um, uh, that's a very good impression. Oh, thank you. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. I I think that's like um, um, you know, it's 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 an interesting. And this kind of goes back to the monarchy thing too, where it's like, it's kind of interesting that it's like these, the, the people who were cutting off King's heads were also like even quite ahead of, uh, ahead than we were in this one sense. And just in terms of this, you know, um, uh, obviously horribly misogynistic and let's not overlook that, you know, but, uh, uh, at the same time, you know, it's like, they were kind of like recognize just the basic thing of like, Hey, everybody just have a voice in the type of government that is going to affect them. You know what I mean? Um, um, which is something I find very interesting. Yeah. Do you think that that was, um, do you think that was influenced by the size of the town? I mean, how big are you talking yeah. it would be? Are we talking yeah. like a, a hundred people, something like that? Uh, so uh, it would be, it, it would be like a few hundred, right? So like, depending on the period, yeah. we're talking a few hundred people. So that, that's definitely that, that's that it for sure increased its like level of efficiency. Uh, and it's just sort of the necessity of like living out in the frontier and stuff, you know, and it's just yeah. like um, uh, that. But at the same time, there was like an ideological, there was ideological like uh, uh, force behind it. You know what I mean? Like right. it, was, it wasn't like just this one town, like on the fringes yeah. was like, like all there was like, like local government was like very important, like throughout these entire, like all the New England colonies, you know. Um, and so there was like an ideological basis for it. So would they tax people and then would they have government employees? Like was John the, the fence mender, was he getting paid by the government? Yeah, he was getting paid. Well, they taxed themselves, right? So like yeah, they basically, yeah. so everybody, and, and it was all uh, uh, handled locally, right? So it was all handled yeah. in town. So basically they would like, the, the people in the town meetings would agree, like how much, all right, we need like this much money. Like how is the share of taxes going to be divvied up? And there was like rich people definitely had it like better, but at the same time, they also paid more, uh, taxes than the poor. Like they, right. they, they put a disproportionate number of taxes. Imagine that. Imagine that. Um, yeah, yeah th that is fascinating that the Puritans were doing that. I didn't know that. Uh, I learned something today. What the yeah. Puritans did for us. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I mean, I suppose you you could look at the Greeks, couldn't you? Who had you know who were the ancient Greeks who were extremely misogynistic. Yeah. Uh, they, they they believed, or some of the cities believed, you couldn't fall in love with a woman, like not even worth falling in love with. Um, but yeah, you know, kind of our modern idea of democracy, you can sort of see, you know, it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. It's not just idealistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, exactly. You kind of see where they're coming from in a way. So do you, so like you, uh, so, so, so you like the, the, the war history stuff. So did you like, do you, what was, is that the kind of stuff that like, uh, um, uh, so some people who, who watch me are Checkmate Lincolnites purists. They'll only watch Checkmate Lincolnites, which is my Civil War series, and nothing else. Uh, okay. Are you a Checkmate Lincolnites purist, or are you one of the cool kids? Oh, I'm 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 totally cool. You know, okay. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you you've got yourself a like an ardent segment of your fan base, huh? Uh, I'm sorry, say what? You you got like a segment of your viewership then that's just like ardent on this one thing. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, how did that come about? Uh, be because uh, that series, Checkmate Lincolnites, is is marketable, right? Okay, and 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 accessible, and uh, and and all my other shit is incredibly esoteric and weird. <laughs> mm. Okay, <laughs> and, right. and I think it's just like it's it's a the ABV is a little high for like a lot of people. Uh, uh, at least that's my theory. But you know, I I don't think it's like. Um, uh, uh yeah i don't know i i don't think it's like that big of a big of a loss it's not like you know um uh yeah i don't know i mean i i i i i kind of as far as you know sort of who i make videos for if anybody it's for like i mean ultimately it's for myself you know just as just a creative expression but like uh but if it's for anybody it's for the kind of core audience right it's for the mm -hmm. i don't know fucking 30 to 50,000 people who watch every video, you know, uh, and mm -hmm. kind of beyond that, I don't give a fuck what anybody really thinks, you know, I mean, I do because I'm deeply insecure, but you know, uh, uh, no, no, but, uh, <laughs> Bottom uh line. Oh. You know, I do in the, in the sense that it's like unpleasant when people talk shit, you know, but, uh, but also yeah. that's just, you know, that's, that's just whatever, you know, it's just expected. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, it's, I don't know. Yeah. It's, I guess, uh, uh, I mean, definitely the the civil war shit is 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 what's popular and what does well. But um, yeah, I didn't realize until um, uh, you mentioned it in one of your videos uh, that thirty percent of I think it was at well adult males in the south own slaves. It's I, just, it's like uh, it's 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 like a so so slave ownership is like uh, there. It's it's complicated. So it's based on census data, and uh, and basically it's like uh, it's more like thirty percent of households. So right, like, um, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, um, but yeah, that's that's. It was like a very, um, uh, it was a very normalized kind of like quite common um, uh, part of society. And of course, most people who would have owned or leased slaves uh, would have been, you know it would have been one or two enslaved people, right? Like, you know, the, the, uh, uh, the big giant plantations, you know, were, were pretty few and far between the province of the, the upper, upper crust of the elite. Uh, although those, that elite, uh, in the South was super influential. I mean, they fucking yeah. ran shit, you know, that was, it was their, the States belonged to them. You know, it was a boys club. Yeah. Very dynastic. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very aristocratic, you know, and then that's a, and kind of going back to England, you know, a lot of these families were, you know, kind of like, uh, Sorry. Yeah, 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 exactly. They were, they were part of the, uh, yeah, they were, they were, you know, they were part of these, these, these big families in England that came over and, you know, struck it rich or whatever and, and continued their, their reign of terror, uh, on a new shore. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I never realized that. I thought it was much lower. I thought it was, you know, 10% or something. Um, so yeah, that was quite, Shocking. I'm mean, interested to ask you as well, like what, you know, what is your, um, what's the biggest historical misnomer about the Civil War that you come across? Um, I think generally, uh, uh, I, I, you know, I think that's a good question. I mean, I think probably just the, the, the simple answer would be like the states' rights thing. Yeah, you right. I mean? I think, okay. Um, uh, which I made a video, which is almost like an hour long about that. Um, you know, I, I, I think sort of, uh, 
to my mind, honestly, the um, uh, most of the states' rights talk. I mean, there's a whole fascinating kind of history, which I don't necessarily need to go into, but in, in that video kind of charting, that sort of charts the course. That was a Checkmate the Gunites episode, and it kind of charts the course of like the development uh, from like the, the the American Revolution. That was this whole idea of like of libertarian government and small government and and uh, and and sort of the states should be autonomous and and all that sort of stuff that that came from kind of these enlightenment principles of like keeping the government small and like they didn't want a standing army and all that kind of stuff because they were super worried about like tyranny and that sort of mm -hmm. you know uh, um, similar way of like the Roman Republic you know they were constantly like paranoid about like somebody's gonna like try to take power you know some fucking dipshit with uh, uh, some megalomaniac with a, with a uh, uh, an with a you know, a bunch of dipshits behind him. Senator basically. Pompey is going to try and, you know, yeah, break yeah, away. Precisely. Yeah. Um, uh, so, you know, they were very paranoid about that and they took a lot of like uh, measures to like keep that from happening. Um, and, and that was sort of the, the precedent behind that. But then kind of like what happened eventually was that like uh, uh, kind of the deep South um, basically believed in just pro-slavery stuff. Like that was like the entire like mm -hmm. uh, a linchpin of their philosophy was just like pro-slavery. Like we will say anything and do anything to like make sure that slavery is not only like preserved, but expanded. And like, and we are given as much like leeway to just like expand the plantation slave economy as possible to just like aggrandize ourselves and make as much money as possible. Um, Get into Cuba and make that a big plantation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was, you know, definitely, you know, uh, um, you know, discussed, you know, over over cigars, you know, and whiskey. Um, but and then places like like Kentucky um, and and Virginia initially were very were were much more um, uh, sort of ideological. They they just like we don't like big government. We we want to be left alone. And and that it wasn't necessarily tied to slavery. It was like the interests of slave owners was kind of just like a tangential issue to that mm -hmm. general kind of libertarian philosophy. But then kind of what happened um, uh, as like the country expanded West and as it became like, uh, as the idea of like what was going to be a slave state and what was going to be a free state became like really important and kind of came to a head, you know, it, there was kind of like, uh, it, it, it became pretty clear that it was like, there was a bit of a, of a spiritual kind of battle, you know, an ideological battle. It's like, is America going to be like a slave republic or is it going to be, a place where, you know, yeah, we have slavery, but maybe we're going to sort of phase it out or kind of like, that's not who we are, right? It's just like, you know what I'm saying? Like, is this going to be like enshrined in our national government or not? Uh, and uh, and then at that point, you know, the sort of the, the small government people, the libertarians in the upper South kind of got drawn into the political orbit of the lower South, because of course the upper South was super dependent on slavery too. Too. So they kind of recognized common cause. And then that sort of got melded together and inseparable until the pro-slavery thing kind of became like a primary sort of part of that philosophy. And, and the libertarian states rights thing was like invoked only to like support that. You know what I mean? Um, uh, and that's kind of what I argue sort of in, in that. But I think that's definitely like the, the most common misconception. But I do think there's like a, a uh, more of a psychological kind of a deeper sort of thing behind that, which is like, like a cultural divide. Part, that's part yeah, of that. yeah. Well, well, specifically with like modern people too. I think there's like a there's well, a, yes. there's, yeah. there's a psychological kind of unwillingness to like for people to, you know, uh, there's a lot of reverence, you know, for like the founders and like the soldiers and the brave boys who fought in the uh, you know, and everyone was so brave and everyone was such a good statesman and like, you know, Thomas Jefferson was uh, nah, 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 you know, he was this great man and and there's like this yeah. there's such a like 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 uh uh there's such a devotion to like these figures, you know, that like the possibility that they might have been self-interested, you know, kind of dumbasses like the rest of us, you know is kind of hard to accept. And I think like, uh, you know, that whole era, especially at the civil war thing where it's like the soldiers are regarded as just like, Oh, they were so brave and they mm -hmm. died so nobly and all this stuff. And like, yeah, they were fucking brave. Like, you know, charging, yeah, soldiers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like charging a cannon is very brave. Like, and like, yeah. you know, I'm not going to like deny that, but at the same time, these were not demigods. These were human beings. No. You know? These were 17 year old farm kids, you know, they, they were not, you know, they were pimply masturbators. They weren't, you know, the fucking titans of of mythology. You know what I mean? Like, uh, and 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 people forget the like the human aspect, um, uh, which I think is kind of the biggest like barrier to get through. Although honestly, George, I'm I've kind of given up uh, trying to 
educate people about the Civil War. I have one more episode of Checkmate Lincolnites left, and then I think I'm going to be done uh, with that cultural wow. war bullshit because I'm kind of fucking sick of it. I, I'm sick of well, dealing with these people, sick. and I, 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 I don't want them to be my problem anymore. Well, so sick of what? What do, what do you mean? Well, I think that just uh, I, I, I think um, uh, you know, I, I started making uh, sort of videos about the Civil War and about. Uh, the history of kind of slavery and racism in America uh, a long time ago, like four years ago now. Um, and yeah. initially my shit was very kind of like normy centrist, middle of the road, um, uh, uh, very uncontroversial kind of stuff, you know, and um, uh, and maybe there was some kind of light, you know, sort of correction, correction of misconceptions and stuff like that. But there was nothing ever kind of like terribly sort of like explosive that I said, I was really just like regurgitating academic consensus, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, and George, the amount of venom and vitriol and the death threats and the fucking like, uh, you know, it just like, there, there, there just sort of came a point where like, uh, where it was just like, I, I'm saying stuff like slavery is bad and people are like, threatening to come to my house. You know what I'm saying? Debating like debating that, yeah. And mm -hmm. it's like and and that that was very sort of disappointing and very sad and kind of pathetic, you know, to like realize that like that these people, you know what I mean? Like yeah. Yeah, just it was very sad. You know, that's the sort of mm -hmm. overwhelming thing was just like um uh, and I kind of lost my faith in humanity for a little while. Um but uh but you know, and and then I sort of I think I kind of came to a point where I sort of like you know, but I kind of kept at it because I hadn't said everything I needed to say yet, you know, but now I've kind of said I had what I have to say. I've got one more episode that I'm going to make next year, which is going to be a slam bang finish. It's going to be fun for the whole family. You bring popcorn. It's going to be epic. It's it, the fans are going to love it. Uh, it's going to wrap the whole thing up in a, in a nice little neat bow. Uh, and it's okay. going to be great. But uh, after that, you know, I'm done. I'm, I'm going to move on to some of my other interests, which frankly, I'm much more passionate about than the Civil War. And uh, uh, like what? Tell us uh, you know, like fucking Puritans and like uh, fucking Puritans, like yeah. fucking Puritans, like that. Like you don't want it, yeah. And, and yeah, just like just m like little shit. You know what I mean? Like like wars, wars. It's like wars. Who 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 needs them? You know? I don't know. They, I, war doesn't interest me that much anymore. What interests me is 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 who was fornicating with who uh, okay. in. in in the Parmenter household in 1638, you know, Massachusetts, you know what I mean? Like very small level shit or kind of what was happening down the street in my neighborhood here in New Orleans 200 years ago. Like that, that's, that's the shit that really interests me, you know? Like the actual nitty gritty of history. Yes. Yeah. 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 The most masturbation possible. I yes. Guess. Yes. So yeah, not just, you know, this is a historic, a historical event that happened. Uh, like, you yeah. know, this is a chamber pot that someone chat in. 300 years yeah. ago. What can it tell yeah. us? Nothing, nothing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, taste test. Mmm, you know, yeah. <laughs> they were very, very ill. Does that make sense to, you know, I, does that, does that, does that make sense or am yeah. I just being ridiculous? No, it makes perfect sense. I think that, it, you know, if you've said everything you want to say, I think, you know, that's good. Most people would just string it along forever. Yeah, yeah. That, that was the other thing too, is that I'm also like, I'm George, I'm such a fucking insufferable hipster that like, I, I, I hate like that civil war shit. I hate its popularity. Like I hate it. I love it. Um, mm -hmm. because I'm not like, you know, I'm not totally, you know, I, I'm not immune to like flattery, you know what I mean? Like, but at the same time, it's like, it's, it's very gratifying, but at the same time I, I resent it. I do. I, I can't help it. I just think that it's like, it's overrated that, that stuff. And I just don't, I, I, it's, I don't think it's like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just such a fucking hipster. It's not, it's, it doesn't matter. You know, uh, you know, who, who gives a fuck? Well, I, I think it's kind of interesting that like uh, the civil war has, you know, like it, um, inevitably, I suppose, like such a, a grasp on the national psyche in America. Like, I think most people in America, if you said, what did the civil war look, look, look like? They could kind of, you know, draw a picture in their head, but like, what did 1910s America look like? I don't know. Yeah, that's me anyway. I mean, um, I was also going to say, yeah, I live in Kentucky. And one of the things I did not expect about living here is how many Confederate flags I would see. Yeah. Uh, Kentucky was a northern state. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, what the fuck? Although are you doing? a slave state, it was a border state, you know. In Morton invaded and yeah. basically said you're you're a northern state. Yeah. 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 No, but you know, you'll find. I mean, you'll find Confederate flags all the way up in fucking Maine. You know, uh, you know. I suppose you, you can find a Nazi flag in Poland, even if you look hard enough. I mean, yeah, yeah, you can get yeah. everywhere. Yeah, in no, Maine. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're they're, they're around, you know. Uh, but yeah, it's. Uh, I think. Uh, but although I think these days, like, if you're, I think if you if you're waving the Confederate flag these these days, you're a fucking, you know. Yeah, at least I th I think most people who would like have like graduated to the thin blue line flag or whatever, you know, just that like, not the people, like if you're doing it now, like you gotta be a real piece of shit. Whereas like 15 years ago, you could maybe be like, you, you know, you might have to like explain to somebody like why it's bad. I don't think, I think at this point it's like very obvious. I think, you know, you know, I think they're, they know what they're doing at this point. I, I remember um, in school. So 20 years ago, more than that. I remember a, a kid I knew had like a, a denim jacket, like kind of like a jacket, like a biker would wear, like a wannabe biker kid. Yeah. And one of the, like the patches on it was a Confederate flag. And I remember saying like, oh, that's a Confederate flag. And he said, no, it's not, it's a biker symbol. <laughs> so, I mean, technically you know. that's true, you know. Um, I, well, I, that, that was the way it was perceived to him in England. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Well, no, I mean, I actually, I came across uh, Confederate bikers in, um, Franklin, North Carolina. Um, uh, it's a, I, I've been there twice. Uh, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a town off of the uh, Appalachian trail. And when I was hiking that section, I, I dropped off in Franklin and I went to a, a really, uh, cute little brewery, uh, where, where, which had some very tasty beers. And then I was on a road trip, uh, a couple years later and, and Franklin was nearby and, uh, we were like, Oh, let's go to Franklin. And I was like, Oh, we'll go to the, that brewery I liked. And, and it was us, and like 20 bikers, like, like not just like, oh, there's a Confederate flag here and there, but like Confederate bikers, you know what I mean? Mr. Like, Confederate, yeah. Like Robert E. Lee quotes, like Confederate flags fucking everywhere, you know what I mean? These were like serious Confederate bikers. We talked to them for a while, like they pet my dog and stuff. And uh, uh, um, although, you know, it was kind of like, you know, they didn't, uh, they, they didn't recognize me. I, I thought they, they might. Um, but uh, they didn't. Um, uh, which not big history buffs, maybe. Say what? Not big history buffs. No, no, clearly not. No, I'm not big history buffs. Uh, but I, but I was like, oh god, are they gonna like, you know, have they like, do they watch the show? Or are they gonna fucking like try to start shit or whatever? But they didn't, you know. So uh, they were nice. I mean, they were, you know, they they were. I'm, I'm sure they're not kind people, but they were very nice people. You know, they were polite. They, they said my dog is cute you know i think that, that you know kind of like the worst thing is is when you meet people like that and they're they're perfectly normal and kind and you know the racism is just so ingrained yeah 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 no for sure well yeah i mean that's you know yeah yeah uh uh yeah i think it's like it's it's hard to I mean, you know, I don't know. I don't know what your grandparents were like, George, but or are like. But you know, uh, uh, my grandparents, my paternal grandparents, you know, uh, were immigrants um, mm -hmm. from Eastern Europe, and uh, um, you know, and and they had very hard lives, and you know, and and ran from Italian soldiers and you know, fascist partisans and stuff, and you know, and. Uh, uh, and, you know, and had, uh, and, and saw fucking horrible shit, you know, and, um, uh, and, and that certainly explains, you know, some kind of aspects of, of their personality and kind of how they ended up sort of viewing the world and everything. And, and, you know, mm -hmm. of course, you know, hurt people, you know, or uh, trauma can kind of, you know, lead to nasty beliefs and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, incredibly loving, wonderful people, uh, horrifically racist <laughs> you know what I, you know what i mean it's just it's you know uh that's just yeah. who they were you know and 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 it wasn't something that couldn't be you know it wasn't like oh you know if if you just uh read you know the anti-racist handbook written by they'll, they'll you know, change their mind yeah 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 it's like you'll you'll come around like no it was just they they just kind of had to not be on the planet Die. anymore yeah, yeah. no 
yeah i mean i think um yeah i i, I mean i can't remember any of my grandparents saying anything racist to me but i'm i'm sure you know i mean the only one alive now is my grandma and she's like 95 so i'm sure a 95 person would have you know kind of racist beliefs but i never heard anything from her that's good Flexa. i mean not necessarily though it's it's not like necessarily guaranteed but uh well did she did she would did she like live through the blitz and stuff she did live through the blitz yeah she yeah. and then she married a fucking german so i mean you know oh, shows wow. what she learned is that uh the schmidt that is the schmidt mm. yep um that that, that checks <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, my story <laughs> checks out fucking good. It's a, it's, it's like German, 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 yeah, that's right. German, German, German. German. Um, um, yeah, yeah. No, I'm half German. I'm half Austrian, I guess. But uh, right, okay. So, mum or dad? My 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 father's people are were Austrian, and my mother's uh, Serbian. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then did they meet in America or what? Uh, my parents? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. They met, you know, they, they were, uh, uh, they worked, um, they were TV producers in mm -hmm. Chicago in the early 1980s. Cool. And, uh, and, and that's, and that's how they met. But yeah, they're, uh, um, my, my grand, my father's grandfather was a real piece of shit. He was a, uh, he was the Dean of a Catholic college. Uh, and that side of the family, my dad was a huge atheist, but but everybody else, you know, older than him and his family was, uh, 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 my dad was an angry atheist, but his, everybody else was a big Catholic. And and his his father was dean of a Catholic college, very devout, very active in his church, and the biggest mm -hmm. adulterer in, in the history of Chicago. Like, this guy fucked so many fucking people. He was such a fucking Brilliant. prick. He like he had a French mistress and everything. Like he, this guy was a giant pile of shit. But yeah, he was. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, he was just the classic. Like you know, yeah, just just you know, uh, totally like upstanding conservative man in the streets and just this fucking like utter sex pest in the in the in the sheets. That is hilarious. My yeah, hilarious. my dad's parents, and I think the you know the whole family were Methodists. They were super religious, mm. but I I never met either of my grandfathers. They both died before I was born. Um, and you know, they I got no religion from either of my grandmas, so I don't know. But he assures me that they were very Methodist and they had a, there was a cousin of his who would frequently have to go to Africa for six months at a time, Africa, whatever the hell in Africa, just generally Africa uh, for six months at a time as a missionary. And then w one time he went and he didn't come back and then he sent a letter and he just run off with a local lady and mm -hmm. said, I'm going, I'm going tribal, you know, that's it. I'm gone. No one ever heard from him ever again. I never oh met the guy. God. I mean, I don't know, but yeah, I mean, I think he left his wife and kids as well. You know, he really disappeared. Wow. Holy shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, what's, you know, there should be a movie about, you know, looking for, looking for grand the cousin. Yeah. yeah looking, for, looking for my grand cousin who I don't remember yeah. the name of. Yeah. Searching for my grand cousin who I don't remember the name of. And it's just a documentary hosted by you where you just, you go to Africa and you find, you know, your family and they're just a bunch of white people in you know in 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 just this very remote village in africa all the men are bald and have this beard <laughs> and they're all and, and they're all played by you in the fiction they're, they're all played by you and we've got like <laughs> different prosthetic noses and stuff yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. i am i am inexplicably <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah 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 um yeah so I, I mean i don't know what happened to him but that's kind of an interesting story um and then, yeah, so my grandma lived through, so my maternal grandma lived through the Blitz. She was in Scarborough, which is a, a town in Northern England on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, they got bombed and everything. And then after the Second World War, World War that's where she met my grandfather. Um, he was a German prisoner of war. But he wasn't actually, I mean, he was only technically German. Well, not just a German, but a German. A Ger well, he wasn't actually. He was, I mean, I, I don't know what the paperwork was or anything, but he was actually in a German enclave in Romania. Oh, interesting. Okay. 
Yeah, and he had, um, before he was captured at the end of the war, he had a family in Romania. Um, like, well, yeah, he had a wife and a baby. Mm. And then I think when the Russians came in Romania, they, they killed everyone. Yeah, yeah. There was a lot of that going on in Eastern Europe at the There's time. There, you know, I mean, uh, yeah. yeah, no, I mean, it's uh, especially my my the maternal side of my family, the Serbs. It's just like, you know, I mean, if if they didn't die during World War Two, then in the 90s, you know. Uh, oh, yeah. Mm. They got, you know, fucking Sorry, but, you know that, yeah. yeah, yeah. They just got fucking obliterated, you know. Um, but the. Uh, um, uh, yeah, I mean, there's I do I do have family. I've never met them. I do have family over there, but um, uh, like some other members of my immediate family have gone over and met them, um, but uh, but I never have. I don't know uh, if I necessarily will because I don't speak the language, you know. So mm -hmm. that's kind of like difficult, you know. To I guess I could learn, but my God, I'm a busy man. You just go there and you know make a friend who can you know a local friend who can speak English and just that's sort of you know do, do the rest with your eyebrows. That's yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's probably an app for that, you know. Yeah, there's probably an app for that. Yeah, probably there's got to be an app. Uh, let's uh, uh, see if um, uh, if there's any more super chats here, George. I don't want to neglect uh, our 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 people. Um, so uh, I hope you're having fun. By the way, I'm I'm having a fucking blast. Yeah. Um, let's see what, uh, what let's, the people have spoken. The people have spoken. Uh, JT, thank you so much for the 10 bucks. Uh, my dude, ravenous versus the mummy. You can only pick one. The other gets scrubbed from history. Which do you pick? Oof. Also, well, uh, either of you consider doing paid editing service for a budding author? Uh, no, I would not. Um, not personally. Um, I'm grossly underqualified. I mean, you know, I, it wouldn't be right for me to do that um but I, uh i, I fuck you buck up <laughs> uh ravenous versus the mummy that's a tough decision good luck with probably, the book though i would probably uh i mean ravenous is my is my favorite movie uh so i would pick ravenous but it would be an utter i mean you know i would probably have to you know commit suicide uh, uh in shame for for having disappeared the mummy do you do you like the mummy George? i love the mummy i love it's yeah a, such a fucking great movie yeah yeah, it is. Um, Immortal. <laughs> yeah, it's it's great. It's uh, kind of like um, almost like the last, not of its genre, but of that era of its genre. Yeah, yeah, sort yeah. Sort of the like swashbuckler. Yeah, totally, totally. There's definitely some like, you know, I mean, uh, you know, I do think it's like a near perfect movie. Sometimes, like in my more recent rewatches, I've kind of like poked some holes into it like there's there are some like there are some quite stupid uh yeah bits. <laughs> yeah there are some very stupid bits yeah uh, like the know, bit when the mummy comes back to life that's pretty stupid <laughs> no. no that part's awesome uh no no but the uh like the, the 10 plagues stuff is like quite dumb and it's like not even biblically like even close to biblically accurate not that it, not that it has to be but it's also like it's it's i mean the 10 plagues of egypt is such like a well-known story mm. that it, it's kind of like saying you know i guess the first president of america benjamin franklin you know it's it's just like so wrong that it's distracting you know um and and of course like then cairo you know it's like there's that scene where like like fucking meteorites like destroy <laughs> cairo you know <laughs> like a city of like a million people <laughs> And it's just like not commented on, you know, it's just like, oh, that happened. There was no like, you know, nobody like the police didn't find Rick O'Connell and say, like, what's the meaning of this? They didn't have to like, you know what I mean? They just sort of like went free. And and um, the 10th plague was a barrage of cruise missiles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. One thing I, I have like a, uh, um, uh, a script uh, that I wrote that uh, is is kind of a play on on this type of stuff that I would that I would love to make one day though probably never will uh because it would be a very expensive movie but uh um uh it, it would basically it would it would kind of start off with you know a, a Tomb Raider you know a Rick O'Connell sort of Indiana Jonesy type person mm -hmm. uh who would be like 
uh, who would who would break into this tomb or this you know chamber, an ancient ancient Egyptian chamber, looking for this artifact, and would grab it and then uh, and then be immediately confronted by like a bunch of soldiers who are just like you know ah doctor you know blah 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 you know doctor American son you know give us the stone uh, never you know da, 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 da. and there's mm -hmm. an action scene where you know there he's like shooting ropes in the tomb and stuff and like, and like, you know, and, and doing acrobatics and he's like shooting mechanisms that then, you know, fall on the soldiers and stuff. And, and it's a very sort of fun PG 13 action sequence and he like gets away and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he like leaves the tomb and he's got like the, you know, the, the cinnamon stone or whatever under his arm. He's running. Ah. And then he like gets, uh, um, uh, and then he like find some more soldiers show up and he gets caught and then it cuts to, him in an Egyptian courtroom, uh, and 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 you know, and the guy who was just like, "Give us the stone," is like the director of antiquities, you know. And it's just like, and it's just like he shot a three thousand year old rope, and you know, causing immense damage to this site, and uh, uh, you know, and 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 we, we may never learn what we could from from this tomb because of Doctor Americanson, you know. And he's just like, you know, it belongs in a museum. It belongs in our museum here in Cairo. Like, what are you doing? And they're just like totally reasonable. Maybe um, the intro could have lots of, you know, local people like in face paint with uh, spears. And then you realize only after when he's back in his Egyptian courtroom that that was a horribly racist hallucination. <laughs> and they, they were all people with clipboards like, what are you yeah, doing? Yeah, what are you yeah, doing? Yeah, exactly. what are you, don't take that. Don't take that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or it's like it was a or it was like a nativity play. You know what I mean? It's Christmas and it was a nativity play. And 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 but yeah, all the people are just like normal people in, you know polo shirts or whatever you know uh and uh, but then of course he would like he would be like the old fossil and he would like team up with like uh uh with like the 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 graduate student you know who's like who's like hip and woke and stuff and they'd be like a foil off of each other and then they would like get wrapped up in you know um uh uh, uh you know patriot front would be like searching for you know the Ark of the Covenant or whatever you know, and 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 they would have to stop you know Patriot the Proud Boys from 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 acquiring you know the 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 cinnamon stone that would then give them power to take over the world you know and uh, and 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 it's like in the Last Crusade you know where they they where he goes to the uh, the Nazi rally but instead it's like a Ron DeSantis rally and <laughs> kind of like. And they've got to like take the key out of Ron DeSantis's back pocket or something, you know. It's like the key to the artifact that unlocks the tomb, you know. And, and it's like in his breast pocket, so he's got to like go undercover and, you know. And you and, could even uh, have the exact shot from Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade where it is Harrison Ford, and you don't change anything. He, it's still Harrison Ford dressed as a Nazi, just looking lost. And then he meets, he meets. It's not Hitler though. It's Ron DeSantis. And, <laughs> <laughs> signs piece of paper and Hitler's like uh, sorry and Indiana Jones is like looking at it like wow I just met yeah, Hitler yeah, yeah. yeah exactly exactly yeah yeah um, yeah and say you know this is how we say goodbye on 4chan <laughs> that would be that would be great yeah yeah it writes itself it writes itself uh, um, yeah it'd be perfect I kind of did I kind of made a slight a, a sort of a version of that I, I definitely took a, sort of inspiration from that I've got a web series called Frozen 50s Man uh, which is, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but um, yes, it's, yeah, it's a similar, you know, conceit uh, uh, where it's, you know, the, the, the old dinosaur who teams up with the, you know, the hip young socialist and they solve crimes. And uh, and then there was an episode where 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 he goes undercover into to QAnon, which was, you know, the big thing, you know, when that we were making that episode. Uh, and uh, and yeah. And, and, and it's not big it, anymore. I don't think it's that big anymore. I don't think Q here's there's another problem we could solve. Uh, and we've been staying, yeah. we've been doing such a great job staying on topic. But QAnon is a problem we could solve. Uh, I don't think it's that big anymore. I think after January sixth, it pretty much, you know, I think I think pretty it's much just fringe losers. Yeah, yeah. The, the jig was kind of up at that point, you know. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. Well, hang on. I'm just gonna. I can hear my phone vibrating. Let me just turn that off. Okay. All right. Do your thing. Um, uh, thank you, Astria, for uh, yes, the indifferent stars above is one of the books that I read about, and uh, and thank you so much for the ten bucks. Um, uh, Sam says yes, thirteen days is a film about the Cuban Missile Crisis, starring Kevin Costner, Bruce Greenwood, and other people. Okay, I think I might have seen that a million times ago, a million years ago, but uh, uh, a few times. Did you see the Atun Shay magic cards? I no. I assume is that like a bit of fan art? I love fan art, so you know. Someone should send it to me. 
I have an uh, off-topic question, if I may. You may, if you want to ask. Um, Sean says, I'm planning to run a, a Dungeons & Dragons game based on King Philip's War. What should I keep in mind for the campaign and setting? I felt inspired by your videos. Uh, that sounds cool. Uh, so would it be set in King Philip's War, or is it kind of like Dungeons & Dragons inspired by King Philip's War? Because that could be, obviously, two very different things. Uh, but... Um, I don't know. I mean, there's, there is, I mean, you know, I could go on for fucking ages, but I don't want to bore George, but, uh, no, go um, on. well, yeah, it's, uh, so here's what you need to start with. So I guess, I mean, it's, uh, if you're doing a, uh, D and D game, probably the best thing to do would be the company should be like a company of militia or like a war band of native warriors. Right. So like that should kind of be the, the conceit. Cause like oftentimes in that, that war, it was like very small groups of people sort of fighting other small groups of people. And it all wasn't very organized. And it was also kind of like uh, the landscape was like slightly post-apocalyptic because so many towns were burned and so many uh, indigenous um, villages and stuff had just been completely wiped out and massacred. So that that's kind of a, a bit of a sort of aspect that you could add in where it's there's constantly coming across like devastation and death and corpses and skeletons and stuff like that. Um, uh, but but yeah, again, it kind of depends on that's that's what I would that's where I would start if I were you, Sean. Hopefully, you're still watching, considering. Uh, Oh, actually, you probably still are. That was only six minutes ago. All right, that's not bad. Um, um, so uh, anyway, um, uh, what, what did you what what did you make of of the QAnon thing, George? Did, were you were you down with that? Did you were you like an enthusiastic part of that, or or were you like, eh, not for me? Well, you know, you, you cry a bit of QAnon, I guess it either hooks you or it doesn't. Um, yeah, yeah. I think about QAnon very Moorish. Uh, <laughs> Well, I, I mean, I don't think I really even understood what it was until, you know, January the 6th. It's kind of hard to remember. Um, what can I say? I mean, the HBO documentary kind of spelled it out. It's Ron Watkins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, probably. You, yeah. you know, and that's the interesting. I mean, it's still interesting that someone wanted to spoof people like that, but it's, it's sad, really, I suppose. Yeah. If it's not funny, it's sad. Yeah, yeah. No, it is quite sad. Well, and there's also the, like, you know, uh, the blood libel kind of aspect to it. You know, it's kind of the repackaged anti-Semitic conspiracy theories kind of, like, you know, made palatable for an internet savvy, you know, 21st century audience, you know, um, uh, which is, you know, obviously quite disturbing, you know, and, uh, uh, and, and just sort of gross. Um, but... Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it, it is. It is quite sad, and it also seems like I don't know. Like I think a lot of the, uh, um, I think a lot of the most kind of vile, uh, internet Nazis and just sort of like fascists and you know just the fucking like just the people on on the internet who are just like the fucking worst. I honestly I don't think that they're. I don't think QAnon really encompasses them. I think they know, like QAnon is based on. Uh, and like a lot of those conspiracy theories are based on like, we have to save the children. You know what I mean? Like there's something, there's this grave mm -hmm. like injustice that we need to like help stop, you know? Um, and I think that the, that the people who are kind of like, you know, the real sort of monsters don't give a fuck about any of that. They just want domination and they want uh, to repress people who are different than them. And they want to inflict their fear and their misery on everyone else. And uh, and I, I don't think that really necessarily applies to the QAnon. I, I think most of these people are were just very gullible, and 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 quite unintelligent, you know, and and uh, are sort of victims in of themselves, you know. Although of course that that excuse kind of only takes you so far, you know what I mean? Because it's like you can explain if someone is like, you know is hurting other people. You could explain the reason why they're doing that. And you're like, Oh, from their perspective, like they might have a good reason, but at the same time, like that doesn't excuse it, you know, an explanation is yeah. an excuse. And like, that can only, you know, sort of, it's important to have universal empathy, but also important not to like lose track of like, okay, but these people actually like killed people or like, you know what I mean? Like they actually tried to like overthrow democracy, you know, uh, yeah. let's not like pretend that that didn't happen, you know? Um, yeah, I, I agree with you. And I, I think that, you know, I think m most of them, you know, most of them obviously didn't appear at January the 6th. That's just a small amount of people who were, were into QAnon, which is a small amount of people. But um, yeah, I think looking at them as kind of victims of a hoax is a, is a good way of looking at it. Like, 
you know, not all of them, not the, the people who are throwing bricks through windows, but it, it definitely tells you something about paranoia. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And to be clear, I'm not, I'm not against brick through bricks through windows, you know, uh, if, if correctly, depending on the window, really. Um, but, uh, but, you know, so, you know, I think, I think as far as solving all the world's problems, I think bricks through windows is only a problem under certain circumstances, but. You throw a brick through the white house window. It's not going to be the president who cleans it up. That's true. That's very true. That's very true. Um, nor clogging the white house toilet, but. Well, I don't I wonder, know. Do you think that like, do you think the bathrooms of the white house are really nice? Or do you think they're just kind of regular bathrooms? Like, it's almost like a, a story from like a foreign diplomat. Like, yeah, the White House was really nice, but then I went into their bathrooms and it was like, what the <laughs> fuck is this? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, they're like deeply, what if you go to like, what if the White House, like the stately Oval Office, and then you go into the bathroom and there's just like graffiti over every surface. And Plywood floors, what's that about? And stickers of local bands, you know? And it's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah you know. Yeah, Biden really, you know, he's, he's, yeah, <laughs> he loves the punk scene. Do I think the bathrooms in the White House are, are really nice? I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you'd hope. I, the, only the hardest hitting questions here on interviews on yeah. MJ Films YouTube channel, George. Only the hardest hitting of questions. I mean, do you think, do you think they have to, do you think they have like their own presidential like sewer line? So that you know, like Chinese spies don't get a, a sample of Biden's stool sample or something. I bet, I bet they do. Uh, like in all seriousness, I bet, I bet there's like some. I bet it's like it has its own separate, separate uh, septic tank or something. Septic like tank. That. Yeah, yeah, like because uh, I mean, you know, because you got it. You you know the 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 like underground you know infrastructure is legitimately you know it's not even like a conspiracy theory. Like it is it is yeah, quite yeah. impressive. You know, it's like the yeah. bunker and shit. And, you know, so there's yeah. got to be some, you know, but yeah, because I bet like, I mean, I, I guess kind of what would be the worst thing that could happen if a Chinese spy got Biden's stool? Would it be because surely they wouldn't be able to like clone him, make like a mini Biden who they could then like, you know, it seems like just send here to just do like, a, uh, you just take pictures of it and send it to him. Like, <laughs> you better come up with five million if you want this back. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. What could they do with it? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, the poop, you know, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to, the poop dies yeah. if, if you don't, you Yeah, know. Mr. Mr. Premier, we've had Biden's poop analyzed, and it turns out that he is a, a very old, sickly man, <laughs> you know. Yeah, my God, my God. Yeah. He's, not so, yeah. he's not so regular. Yeah, although I think, I mean, probably, you know, you could probably get, I would imagine there would be, like, legitimate, like, security issues if it, like, if it, uh, uh, connected to the main DC sewers. Cause like you wouldn't have to be like the smartest person in the world to be like, Oh, we'll like come up from underground, you know, you just have yeah. to have like, seen a Steve McQueen movie, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but I'm sure, you know, there's such, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm sure there's such a level of surveillance just like in that whole area of DC, you know, it's like, you can't even like fucking, you know, spit without, you know, somebody in an office somewhere, you know, knowing about it, you know, that whole, that whole sort of down the, the national mall, that whole area, you know, in DC has got to be just surveilled up the fucking ass. Yeah. I, I used to, well, I used to live in London and in Green Park, which is right next door to Buckingham Palace, you could see them. Like if you went there on a normal day, you wouldn't see You could them. see them with binoculars? Just No, you, you, no, it's all dudes in like, it's all fucking like heavy set bald dudes in yeah. North Face coats who were sat like that, right? And it'll yeah. be a rainy day, so there's no one else there. And they're, they're sitting there. They're not looking at their phone. They're not drinking. It's like that guy's a fucking MI5 agent, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like at least start right. drinking. At least start, at least start, start drinking. drinking you know? I could believe it then that yeah, you were yeah. in this park for no reason. Yeah. No. Yeah, I'm. I'm sure they probably are. I'm sure they probably are. So, yeah, I mean, did you, you like, did you enjoy living in London? No. No. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> I can talk about that if you want. I mean, have you ever been to London? Uh, yeah, a long time ago, you know. Yeah? I, I, I would love to go back. I would love to go back. Mm -hmm. How long were you there for? Oh, you know, I don't know, a week. Once, yeah, right. You know, 15 years ago, you know, when I was a child. Right. Saw the Tower of London and, you know, 
I did yes, the tourism stuff. I would love to go back. Uh, the vegan food is uh, out of this world, apparently. So I'd love to fucking try some of that shit. And uh, and also, I would love to go to. Uh, uh, speaking of, uh, once again, the Puritans. Uh, there's also all sorts of locations that are that are puritanically significant uh, around London and just Southeast England in general that I would also love to go to. But uh, I, I I liked I I much I have to say I've I've been to Scotland once and England once. I much preferred Scotland, but yeah. Scotland's really beautiful. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's absolutely gorgeous up there. But what, what um, uh, did you live in uh, London? Like, as a, were you like, uh, like really young? Were you like, it was was this? Uh, were you in school or or were you like uh, uh, a I, young I man? Lived, I lived in London for about six years. Um, I guess exactly. between like 19, 19 years old and twenty five, something like that. Okay, okay. I, yeah, I um, I went to college there. For three years and then stayed i suppose for three years after that and i lived in west london and ealing and um yeah i'd, I'd never live in london again poor london it, yeah. it, it it was a it was an extremely depressing place in, in a way like i can see how london like a lot of places would be a pretty cool city if you had quite a bit of money to throw around. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask since you were, you know, nineteen, you were probably broke. So, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, being a student, that's probably like the best standard of living I've ever had. Mm. Um, but um, yeah, it was. I don't know. I mean, what can I tell you about London? It was very dirty. <laughs> it was very dirty. <laughs> it was very dirty. It was a very lonely place. It was sort of. It felt mean spirited a lot a lot of the time yeah and um yeah that's a shame i mean i think i i think a lot of cities you know i mean it's those big like fucking like blah, fucking like you know global cities i mean new york is kind of the same way i really love visiting new york i've never lived there uh but uh i like I'm new not, york you like it I, I liked it when I visited. I, yeah yeah you know, I visited for like a week as well. Yeah 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 but it, you know it's like uh um but yeah, I, I would imagine the living there would be quite hard. You know, all my friends in New York are moving every three days. You know, they're just like always like housing is super insecure and, you yeah. know, and, and it's always a struggle to like get enough money and stuff like that. And and yeah, it's a similar thing where it's like, uh, uh, um, yeah, and it's not a struggle like to get money, even if you're like comfortably middle class. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, no, I understand. Yeah, so, yeah. Obviously, yeah, yeah. It's like it's uh, often that's, you know, always a struggle to get money for like most people, but um uh but like uh but yeah yeah that just sort of like yeah it, it just seems like very stressful you know and and everything's very packed in and stuff but uh, very uh but you know there's some fucking great i mean i love brooklyn i really fucking yeah. love brooklyn and uh um you know there's a uh it's it's the best place in the world to go to a lesbian astrology themed bar hmm yeah that astrology themed yeah, well, what there's only that? one that I went to, but it made a very positive impression on me. It's called Mood Ring on Bushwick Avenue, I believe. It's a, a lesbian astrology themed bar in Brooklyn. How much did they have to pay to put it on Bushwick? Uh, like, how, how much did they have to pay me? No, no, no. Like, how much did when they were setting up their bar were they like, I don't care where it is as long as it's on Bushwick? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. It just seems perfect for a lesbian. Yeah, oh, um, mood ring on Bushwick. Yes, there, there's <laughs> got to be a joke in there somewhere. Yeah, I just yeah, can't yeah, find it. Really it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, but you know, hey, mood ring, check it out if you're ever in Brooklyn. It's got the Atun Shea seal, uh, seal of, uh, of 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 approval. <laughs> what do you uh, like about it? What do I like about mood ring? Yeah. What what isn't there to like? Um, uh, it's very the lighting is very low and purple, and there's all sorts of weird exotic yeah. fungi growing in in jars, and uh, um, and you know, and and there's there's green neon weirdness, and everybody there is like super cool and hip, um, mostly lesbians, but all sorts of people, you know. Um, and uh yeah i just did and you know of course astrology themed shit everywhere yeah it's like it's like laser tag but a it sounds like you're describing yeah. a hitman level <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it's like a hitman level yeah 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 uh george uh, occupy the the people 
uh, I'm going to go uh, get a beer. I, okay. I promise I'll only be 30 seconds. Just All talk right. about how okay. much you love uh, King Charles and how, how happy you are that he's king. <laughs> well, I think the best thing about King Charles, uh, you know, is his mighty absolute unit of a uh, hand yeah, because of his terrible gout, I suppose. Uh, king Charles, what can you say about him? I mean, uh, you know, cares about the environment, I guess. Doesn't he? You know, nice hair, good haircut, you know, his fingernails are always clean. This is long 30 seconds. Oh, thank God. Oh, God, I was <laughs> flailing out there. <laughs> Where are you flailing? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, sorry, my bad. Um, so, no, uh, uh, what other problems should we solve? Uh, should we solve, uh, how about guns? You and Christina kind of talked about this on, on Dead Air. Should we solve oh, the problems of guns? Yeah, okay. Let's go. Let's solve gun violence. Let's solve gun violence. Um, uh, so I, I don't know. I, I, I am unconvinced that, uh, gun control will solve gun violence. Me too. I'm, I'm thoroughly unconvinced. Um, if, if, if it were, I, I, I guess if it were a viable solution, I would at least like be open to considering it. But I think, uh, uh, I think ultimately where the, the gun control thing would go is, is okay. So like, who's going to enforce gun control? Yep. Is that group particularly renowned for their equal application of enforcement and justice, or are they horrifically bigoted murderers of innocent people? You know what I mean? Um, so that's kind of where I'm at with it. I think sort of that's kind of the main thing. I, I think personally, I do have like kind of a deeper ideological kind of like hesitation uh, to like give the government that much power, uh, even though, you know, obviously the government has all sorts of others, you know, mm -hmm. fucking crazy powers that, that mm -hmm. I live with every day. But at the same time, you know, I, I, I do I do kind of see the libertarian argument. Like, I just don't think that like, you know, that, that the government should have that power to be like, to say you cannot be armed, you know, uh, um, and, and, um, you know, and I think also just kind of on the practical side, I mean, here in New Orleans, like if you call the cops, they won't come. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Straight up. Definitely they just, not just New Orleans. Yeah. Come, you know, and like, uh, so it's like, kind of, you know, ultimately the, the, yeah. the, the you know, the only way to deal with a bully is to fucking bop them on the nose you know what i mean and like and if you don't have you know a method to do that and i'm not saying i'm a badass like i'm not you know i'm, I'm not skilled in the arts of war but like ultimately if it like really fucking came down to like if it really fucking came down to a truly fucking desperate situation that was someone was kicking in your door yeah if someone was kicking yeah. in my door like i'm not gonna fucking you know i don't know um so yeah i don't know that's where i'm at about it what do you think george I think I, I agree with you. I think that it, it's if, if from the kind of liberal side, it's kind of a waste of political capital to yeah. try and get rid of guns because, you know, it, it is so kind of culturally ingrained here that guns are uh, part of people's rights and they really are part of, you know, the culture big time. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, the dem you know dem democrats are the ones usually talking about gun control and a lot of the conversation is focused around assault rifles but it's handguns that kill the most people yeah it's just assault rifles are you know involved in these high profile massacres yeah um so i mean i i agree i mean i i guess it's probably it's no doubt unconstitutional but i guess what i would like to see i don't think this would fix anything necessarily but I'd like to see, you know, yeah, you, you can have a gun and you, you, all you need to do is do a very basic weapons handling test like every five years to prove that you're not a fucking idiot with it. Yeah. You know, like, can you load it and unload it and aim it without pointing it at your own face? <laughs> the level? But I seriously yeah. think that would help. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, but I, I think what you said about the people enforcing these 
laws if, if we passed, you know, tighter gun control. I think that's really important because I, I imagine it would be, I I think you're right. You know, if you look at a lot of where gun control came out of, like the Black Panthers starting to get armed with yeah, assault weapons and stuff like yeah. that, people then start to say, oh, well, these are the wrong sorts of people who have guns. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think, it, you know, you could inadvertently, if you push gun control through, actually make it so it's gun control people for poor people, black people. We don't, we don't yeah, care. Yeah, you know. people. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, and, and there's also, I mean, it's like, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, even even now, it's like the a lot of the, uh, a lot of kind of gun ordinances and, and just sort of the way that the police deal with uh, people with guns varies like drastically because of, uh, it, due to their race, right? Like, it's yeah. like, like um, um, you know, like the, you know, the, the stories you hear from like black gun owners or whatever, if they get pulled over and they have a gun in the car, they have to be so solicited yeah. and yeah, just, right. and just like, so officer, just so you know, like there was a gun in the car, you know, would you like to see its legal registration and all this kind of stuff, you know? And it's like, and it, you, you, it's just like walking on fucking eggshells and just have to be so solicitous and so like, um, uh, what's the term? Just like deferential, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's like the opposite of what, of how it's supposed to be and how it works for white dudes, right? Like that is the exact opposite, which is just like, yeah, I've got my gun, you know, what are you gonna do about it? You know, it's like, and, and um, uh, so yeah, it just seems that like having significantly stricter gun control laws, especially like you said, like the whole assault rifle thing is like, a lot of that discourse like does not have a very good, like just operational knowledge of like what actual type of gun, you know, yeah they're talking about, you know what I mean? It's like assault rifle. Okay. Like which ones, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, and yeah. people fixate on AR 15s, even though AR 15s are like, not, you know, really, you know, the, the, uh, you know, are, are, you know, it doesn't really, it's a political talking point more than it's an actual kind of like real statistical thing, you know? Um, yeah. and yeah, so it's, it's, uh, I mean, that said, you know, I do like, I, I, there, I, I know a lot of people who I respect very much, uh, who have kind of the more liberal sort of view and, and who think about this very differently. And, and, you know, I, 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 uh, so, you yeah, know, I, I, and I like, I, I get the concern, you know, where it's like, I, I totally get where you'd see these like horrific fucking massacres and, and just be like, this is, we, we just need to like throw everything that we have at this, you know what I mean? But like at the same time, like, I don't, I don't know if we should create more problems you know, I think we create more problems than we solve, and I'm not even sure we'd even solve stopping the massacres, right? Like, yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. I, I agree. I mean, guns definitely facilitate, you know, massacres. It's it's obviously a lot easier to kill 30 people with a gun than it is with a knife, but um, they facilitate it. They don't cause it. Like there, you know, there is some sort of social psychological problem that is making people run amok. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's not just observed in America. I mean, I think the word amok, I want to say, comes from Morocco and describes people at the highest point of summer going crazy and cutting people down with a machete. Yeah. And there's something about, it's not just, like I say, it's not just America, but there's something about America where more people here are just going crazy. And yeah. Um, well, I, I wonder, like, if it's something. Um, uh, where it's like actual as far as actual kind of measures that could be taken. I mean, maybe it's like, um, you know, maybe it's something like if you have like a history of like domestic violence or something, you know what I mean? Like then you can't buy a gun. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, something like that where it's like, I I'm sure. Cause you know, it's, 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 you know, people don't just like massacre people out of nowhere. Like yeah. they just don't, right. Like if you, it's, it's, for for every time that you have the kind of classic, like he was just so normal, he was so nice, you know. There's like 99 times where it's just like that guy was fucking weird, you know. <laughs> we like saw this was, coming. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's like yeah. that guy was something was really fucking wrong with that guy, you know. I, 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 I don't know. It's it's um, uh, and and these people almost always, you know, hurt their kids or hurt their wives or like hurt pets, you know what I mean, or hurt animals. So like it's I don't know. I I think like a lot of the stuff is like could be quite preventable, but like, I, and, and this is the, the, this is what makes us totally qualified to solve all these world problems, these problems in the world, George, is that uh, I know basically no statistical 
I have no statistical anything to back my theories up, but I would imagine okay. that there would be a pretty high correlation between like people who hurt animals, people who hurt children and like mass shooters and stuff like that. So it's like, if you have beaten your wife or your kid, or you, you know, strangled a cat and that's on your record, like, no, then you don't get a gun. But like, um, yeah. And I also just think it's like, uh, you know, there's, there's, uh, you know, I mean, there's, there's fucking flash, uh, mob musicals put on by all sorts of fucking, you know, Nazis all over the country now, you know what I mean? Uh, and we're, you know, they're just like out and about and they're like organized and they're armed. And it's like, you know, what, what, what are we going to like expect officer Joe to take care of this problem for us? Or like, is your, uh, are your, you know, local, uh, Antifa going to have to fucking strap up. You know, I suspect the latter is going to be the more immediate solution, uh, to actually discouraging this kind of fascist violence and intimidation, but, uh, it's definitely an effective know. leveler. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That just seems like it's, 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 you know, going to be, going to be a little bit more, uh, uh, effective. Have you ever seen, um, shoot Him up with Clive Owen and Paul Giamatti? I don't think so. It's a, it's a movie from 2007. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's an intentionally like, over the top action film. Um, and it's a, a, uh, uh, it's, it's a satire of, of gun culture. Um, and, um, uh, and, and Clive Owen plays like this, uh, man with no name type drifter who, mm -hmm. um, uh, basically finds this pregnant woman who delivers this baby and then gets shot by these goons. So he's like protecting this baby. It's like the proto Mandalorian, but he's like protecting this baby and like fighting. And Paul Giamatti is this like mob boss who's trying to get this baby for reasons that are initially unclear. Uh, and he's sending like waves and waves of dude over at Clive Owen and he just murders them all in the most like uh, ridiculously fun ways. Yeah. Um, uh, and it, it, the plot kind of eventually kind of takes a turn where it's like the, um, you know, it's, it, this isn't the sort of, you don't watch this movie movie for the plot so i'll spoil slight a slight twist but uh it's the 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 baby is like the uh, it's like a test tube baby uh created to like lengthen the life uh of this like gun baron uh who's who's like or the senator or something who's like this super yes, precious stem cells yeah the precious stem cells yeah. to like for, to like to, to make this like republican senator and his like billionaire gun uh, bear uh, friend like live forever uh and um uh and and so it's kind of all wrapped up in that and and uh and there's this great line where um uh uh where paul giamatti and clive owen are facing off and uh um uh, and and clive owen has some like one liner about just like you know oh you know all the guns in the world won't make your little dick any bigger and and paul giamatti's like come on come on guns don't kill people but they sure help and it's like <laughs> It's a great little, it's a great little movie. But I, I that, that and In Bruges were my like high school favorites that I would watch like once a month. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a classic. It's a great little like forgotten little film. Uh, you know, mid budget action movie. The director never did anything else. Um, hmm. You know, and uh, and and yeah, it's it's. Uh, I heartily recommend it. I don't even know if it's you know streaming anywhere. You know, probably is somewhere, but. Um, uh, but yeah, that, that kind of made me think of it. Hmm. What's that called? Shoot him up. Okay. And what you say, like 2006? Yeah, 2006, 2007, you know, sort of the, the golden age of Clive Owen. <laughs> yeah, you don't see him anymore, do you? Well, he was great in that. There was the, did you see the Monica Lewinsky uh, uh, fucking miniseries uh, on nope. HBO, something like that? It's a, um, he, he plays, uh, Clive Owen plays Bill Clinton. And it's about like um, uh, Monica Lewinsky's like internship and the scandal with Bill Clinton and stuff. And uh, and he's super. He's a huge piece of shit. It's great. It's like yeah. Monica is super like relatable and and sympathetic. And and Clinton is just like a giant asshole. It's awesome. Okay. Yeah. No. That that sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, that does sound good. No. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Um, well, George, we, we've been we've been at it for nearly two and a half hours. Should we uh, should we wrap things up? Yeah, if you're ready to. Yeah, are there any other questions or anything? Oh, good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah very good question. Um, are we worried about book bannings in the United States? 
Uh, well, I mean, I think you're better to answer that. I mean, personally, I'm not because uh, I think that, you know, things would be different if we didn't have the internet now. And I think yeah. that, I think that ultimately, I think that ultimately banning books in schools will lead a number of children to want to know more about those books. And I don't actually think it will, I don't think it's a good thing, but I don't think it will have an ultimately negative effect on curiosity. Yeah. I think kids will just be like, well, I'll go home and go on my internet and find out why this book is banned. And that book sounds cool now. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, no, that'll, uh, yeah, get them in an archive.org uh, rabbit hole. Yeah, I mean, I think the graphic novel Mouse was banned and oh, yeah. as, soon, as soon as it was banned, I think it had something like its 20th best year of sales. Yeah. because people wanted to know why they banned this so yeah. i mean I, I i'm definitely worried in terms of like it's not a good way to go is it but yeah 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 precisely no i yeah i i, I totally agree like i think like obviously like you know books should not be banned just yeah, again just like ideologically you know what i mean you've got like yeah. you know uh, that's that's obvious but yeah i i think it'll be totally ineffective a totally flaccid you know measure that will that will inevitably fail and and yeah like backfire spectacularly uh, uh gloriously and spectacularly um uh, yeah, I mean, if they banned, if they said, you know, you cannot legally look at Mein Kampf ever again, I, that, I'd want to look at it straight away. I mean, just, yeah. just I just want to know. More fool you, though, because Mein Kampf fucking sucks. Man, it's a load of crap. Yeah, I know. Well, not, not even just a load of crap. It's just like a dreadful read. It's all over the place, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He He's just a terrible writer. Um, yeah, no, he sucked. Yeah. <laughs> you should have stuck painting. <laughs> I, I don't think he was a terrible painter, but uh, yeah, well, that's what I mean, you know. Yeah, just very uninspired. It was just very like, like, like Hitler paintings wouldn't be out of out of place in like a motel. Postcard paintings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they yeah. just you know, it's it's just they they were fine. Like they they there was skill, but there's no like creativity. You know, there's no like inspiration. That's you know? why the Holocaust happened. Is Hitler didn't meet his muse? Someone to be like, yeah, you know, yeah. you're, just, you're very more visual. You know, <laughs> you're not speaking like Jennifer Coolidge. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, he needed, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, uh, here's another one. Uh, uh, since we aren't going to do Civil War videos after the next Checkmate Lincolnites, will you still do video on the history, videos on the history of New Orleans? Yeah, definitely. And and I'm not saying that I will will never make another Civil War videos, but uh, video, but I, I'm I'm done with the lost cause stuff, except as it incidentally comes up uh, just in the course of, you know, another topic. Uh, and I think I'm done with like debunking. You know what I mean? I I I think debunking is. Uh, I would rather like create an alternate narrative. You know what I mean? Uh, um, I, I I I generally, I'm I'm kind of. I think like a, a big problem with YouTube uh, is 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 everybody's kind of aping off of everybody else's shit. You know what I mean? Is everything's derivative off of something else? You know what I mean? Where it's like. Yeah. Everything's review of something or a reaction to something or a, you know, argument or, or like a response to a reaction to a response. And it's just and and I'd rather just like make my own shit. Right. I'd rather just like be make my own original stuff that like I can that is like, OK, this is mine. And like it's not, yeah. you know, like, you know, for example, like a lot of the the movie reviews, you know, I mean, like the, this recent Ravenous video, I'm very proud of it. Um uh, but, uh, at the same time, it feels like less mine because it's a review. It's kind of a math, uh, you know, it's, it's a, it's, I'm building off of like work that Antonia Bird did, you know, 25 years ago, you know what I'm saying? So it, I, I find, uh, um, it, it, it feels less like, I guess, worthy. I don't know. This is a whole uh, kind of way to put it, but you know, but it's like, it, it feels like less, you know, I, I, I feel less attached to it. It feels less mine. And like, I want to make my shit. Like, I, I want to, yeah. you know, make stuff that that only Andy could make. Not, you know, that any fucking jackass, you know, with Premiere Pro could make. Uh, and 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 I think the debunking is kind of, you know, it's like it's it's sort of a, a almost a net negative, right? It's like it's 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 a it's destructive rather than constructive. I don't know. That sounds probably super pretentious, but I never claimed to be. Otherwise. No, uh, no, I, I think that's interesting. Uh, I guess you've you know, you've probably reached a point in a lot of, you know, a, a similar point to a lot of people where, yeah, like the debunking can, I don't know, rightly or wrongly, but can feel like, you know, pissing into the wind. 
Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. I mean, I think I, I do think like I've I've uh, I think specifically with the Checkmate Lincolnite stuff, I do think I've like made a minor impact. Like the way I put it, uh, where I sometimes put it is, it's like I think it was like I think generally the lost cause myth. You know, also obviously all sorts of other really shitty bigoted ideologies are taking its place. But I think the lost cause myth specifically is kind of like you know, it's on life support. It's heading to the grave. It is not long for this world. And I think my work is like a little tiny little nail, a little, you know, the, the nail in the smallest little box at Home Depot in the coffin. But I do think it was like, it's there, right? Like it is a nail in that coffin. Uh, and I'm proud of that. And I'm happy of that. But like, I, 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 I don't, uh, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to be that guy. And I don't want to do that mm -hmm. shit. And I don't want to like hold the hands of people who frankly, I now feel are like, I don't know. I'm just sick of holding people's hands, you know, which I feel like I have been doing and, and, you know, and giving people just such good faith and the benefit of the doubt. And, and, uh, people, people you guys who have seen the latest episode of Checkmate Lincolnites with that fucking monologue at the end, will know what I'm talking about, uh, before the resurrection. But, uh, you know what I mean? Like, I just feel like for years I was holding these people's hands and trying to bring them to water. And then they just took the water and they threw it in my face. And now I'm just done with them. You know what I mean? I just don't, I, I'm out of patience and I don't give a shit and they can live their life in whatever shitty, stupid way they want to. I'm going to make psychedelic documentaries about Puritans now. You know, I'm just, I'm done. Uh, well, what exactly do you mean? Like uh, holding the, you mean like intellectually or like you tried to bring yeah. them to, to yeah, these kind conclusions of. and... Yeah, kind of. Yeah. I, I just feel like, uh, you know, I think that whole kind of series is kind of coddling a lot of these people, you know, right. uh, and, and, um, and there kind of comes a point where, and obviously I'm talking, this is deeply irrational, right? Because I'm talking about a collective, <laughs> I'm talking about an yeah. audience of millions, not, you know, one person who I'm kind of personifying because my brain can't handle the concept of millions of people, but like, uh, but you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, I, 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 um, yeah, I don't know. I just I I feel like I've I've been very generous, uh, yeah, intellectually and just in terms of my argumentation, giving them like very just affording them considerable nuance and giving them the benefit of the doubt and uh, and all this and you know despite all of bending over backwards to accommodate their their fears and doubts and insecurities, I feel like I'm still you know the Yankee devil with horns, you know, who's, you know, the worst thing that ever happened right. and the carpet bagger who, you know, is coming down and telling us how to live. And like, at a certain point, it's just like, eat my shit, dude. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to fucking, you know, I'm trying to help you, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, but think I, I, I don't know. I, 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 but I do think at the same time though, that is a deeply irrational, you know, like idea on my behalf, you know, cause I think I, I am kind of like personifying an entire group of people in a way that's like deeply not realistic. I don't know. Is this making any sense at all? Yeah. 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 I think that, yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I think, think that, you know, what you're describing is something that uh, probably a lot of people go through in their professions. Like I can definitely think of like teachers I've spoken to who, you know, go in, I wouldn't even say very idealistic. They want to help. They want to help kids, and then they they get into to you know like in that case, oh, it's a it's a system, and there's not much I can do. And then you know you get to the point of well, do I turn my back on it, or do I keep going even though I'm making so little difference? But I guess what we're talking about here is convincing people of something who have an ideological commitment to not be convinced of that. Yeah that does sound like uh, you know sisyphus yeah yeah, like yeah precisely. a little bit yeah. there is i think there is a bit of that um but um but yeah yeah um yeah totally all right uh let's see what else we've got here so uh because thank you for the two bucks i'm still waiting for you both to become cool so i can <laughs> brag that i've been subscribed since before that happened <laughs> nice <laughs> That was a good line. That was a good, I like that one. Uh, what uh, genres do you both absolutely refuse to make content uh, on tangentially related, considering you both sound like you have voices for it? Would you ever consider voice acting? Um, I don't know. What, what do you think, George? What, is there a genre or a type of thing you will just never, ever make? For YouTube? Um, 
well, I suppose I'd never make a make a video. I mean, now that I've said it, that doesn't actually sound kind of fun. And a reason to wear makeup. <laughs> um, um, I suppose you know, I I try and punch up in what I'm doing. I'm uh, I would try and not make a you know like a gossipy video or something like that about a small youtuber i yeah, try and exactly. not make a i don't know like i try and if i was going to talk about johnny depp i'd rather talk about something serious than you know shat the bed <laughs> um or didn't i don't know i can't remember yeah. uh, what about you um yeah i don't know i don't i'm not sure that there that there uh that there is something that i would i mean i, I don't think i would ever do well, no, there's tons. There's tons of shit that I would never ever do. But like, I, I think that's I, I think that's generally like it wouldn't even occur to me to make that stuff because that's just kind of not how my brain is wired, you know. Um, uh, you know, like um, uh, you know, like if I ever did, uh, I don't know, like a the sort of gimmicky kind of Mr. Beast type video, you know, uh, it would of course be like as a joke or even something as yeah. like well, like a like a reaction video. I would probably only ever do that as a joke, you know? Um, yeah. A one-off yeah, thing. Yeah. 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 But like, uh, um, but there's also kind of like stuff that, um, uh, yeah, I, I do think there is that, that, that I, I, you know, I, I definitely like pretty acutely sort of feel the, the responsibility of, of having uh, an online audience of people who, even slightly consider me to be like an authority on something. So I think that kind of like, I think kind of using that responsibly is important, you know, uh, where like, I might, I might just like talk about my personal opinion on, on things. I mean, my last video was by far the most political video I've ever fucking made and, uh, and came off very strong in every single way. I mean, that, that is a high proof video. Uh, but that's typically not what I do. You know, it's typically, it's very, uh, you know, not tame, but you know, it's, it's not, I, I, I won't necessarily kind of like go too much into the weeds of, of my own, uh, uh, convictions. Uh, although, you know, there's definitely a place for that. Um, but yeah, I think just generally like, yeah, like you said, like not punching down, you know what I mean? Like the, the worst yeah. thing that could possibly happen is, uh, is, is, you know, it is, is, like ruining somebody's life because I sicked my audience on them or whatever. And, you know, I think mm -hmm. you see that with a lot of people who make online content where it's just like, Oh, here's, we're kind of like harmlessly, just like harmlessly making fun of this one weirdo. And then they like lose their job, you know, because millions of people saw that. And like, there's like super like devastating real world consequences for that person. Mm -hmm. you know? um, uh, so, you know, I, 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 I think that's, that is like really important is like, uh, yeah, I would just never do anything that would, uh, um that would do that i also like wouldn't um uh yeah like you said like kind of start youtube drama drama and kind of going off of that was like the i mean i would if somebody like if somebody really like really deserved it well, no, if somebody like came after me you know what i yeah. mean if it was if somebody like really came after me i could see myself like flinging some shit back flinging some shit back but like yeah. i but um but it, but i also think that a lot of that is is a lot of that stuff is done quite cynically. Like I think most of the people who make videos yeah. about other people are, are, uh, and I haven't done it since my channel was very, very tiny. And the only person who I did it about, who I dedicated an entire video to, and I wasn't even shit talking. I was just disagreeing was, is, um, Brandon F who does revolutionary war stuff. And he and I are really tight now and we're buddies and he's just like the sweetest guy. Um, uh, but you know, it's like, uh, um, but yeah, something like that. I think I think a lot of those. I, th I think people would be surprised how little of that sort of content is genuine. It's real. Yeah. I think a lot of it is just like this is controversial. This will get clicks. This will make me money. And, and I think that like that that when that, that content creators have like battles, you know, I think a lot of that is like we're both making a killing off of this. Oh yeah, know? totally. I, I you know I I really doubt that a lot of it is genuine. And I think that like and and I know. I got to sort of watch my words here, but I know that like there have been people out there who I think have tried to, to like bait me into something like that. Uh, but I have not taken the bait because I know that okay. it would help them. Like it would, it would not help me. It would help them, you know? Uh, 
So, but yeah, if somebody like, I don't, I, don't, I won't, but like there, there okay. would be a circumstance where like, I would like go pretty nuclear, but, uh, but it would take, okay. it would take a very, it would have to be a very, very, very egregious thing. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, George, don't you be talking shit about me or I'm going to fuck you up by sending <laughs> all of my history nerds after you. <laughs> what about uh what about voiceover work oh uh i i i i don't think i think i can do accents quite well but i don't think i'd be a good voice actor i don't think i'm i, I don't think i have the uh um uh i think i'm only a good actor under very specific circumstances so i don't think i can do it do you uh, do you, i mean you you would you would you ever act have you ever acted no i mean i guess i've acted in like student movies that my friend was making you know when it was his turn yeah, yeah sort yeah. of thing you know and he was in my movie sort of thing uh no i mean i i would consider doing voiceover work if you know someone offered me something but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna start auditioning or anything um i mean i i think that like a lot of things it looks like a lot of fun if it's not your job 100 percent of the time i imagine it can get really exhausting and like actually physically difficult after a while well, yeah, uh, yeah I, i'd act if someone were, if someone was like can you can you help me out my actor didn't turn up i've got a film today i'd love that that'd be yeah, great and then, then i've got an excuse to be shit <laughs> you know i was helping them out you know you could see yeah, me reading yeah, the script yeah. with my hand yeah yeah well we should yeah. uh well well you should um well you should you should uh you should come down to new orleans sometime and we should like make a short film and you can play British man number one, and and <laughs> no, you can play the part I was born to play, baby. <laughs> no, you can play the young Prince Charles. No, or uh, no, or or you're like a uh, you're like a detective. You can play a detective who goes to like this creepy house. You know what I mean? Like, and you're like investigating a murder, and 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 you know, and and it's a creepy old man, you know, like Dracula, who's you know. Also played by me. <laughs> played by you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. Well, we, yeah, we should. We should. One of these days, I'll put you in a short film. I would love that. that. I would yeah, love that. Come down to New Orleans. You can have a place to stay. It's, it's, it's a day's drive away. It's not bad. You gotta, you gotta make it really bloody. Like I want, like a horrendous death or something. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. My, I, I'm, I got you with the horrendous deaths. Wait, wait until you see yeah. my film, George. Uh, uh, which, speaking of, actually, before we, before we uh, wrap this up. Uh, uh which speaking of uh just uh, the people at home uh the the um exciting developments are in the work for uh, my film the Sudbury devil uh the first trailer should be out uh next week which is very exciting and uh it is very bloody and there is a lot of death and uh it's gonna be really good um all right well why don't we why don't we uh blast through we did get a couple of more of these uh super chats okay. thank you everybody uh why don't we blast through these and then we can call it a night um uh um radiance red says you'll never change the mind of lost cause bigots but check me like it's got me out of that mess and help pave the way for me to uh critically look at history thank you uh well i'm i'm glad i'm 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 glad i'm glad i i i might be just cynical and weird about it and and you know i might be letting the bastards get me down yeah, did. yeah. so i i appreciate that uh lady tyler hello lady tyler a pleasure as always i've studied pirates for years can't change anyone's opinion. Uh, uh, Lady Tyler is a is a pirate historian. Uh, just so you know, George, uh, erstwhile patron of mine. Um, can't change anyone's opinion. Sucks yelling into the void. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I, and with, with pirates too, there's a whole lot of you know, it's it's you know the the, the reality and the pirates of the Caribbean popular uh, cultural depiction has got to be brutally hard for 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 serious historians about the period to uh to, to penetrate through so uh, very right thing yeah yeah uh have you considered doing anything with the creek wars uh, i have not um uh but i would not be opposed uh it's not uh, necessarily my area of expertise but it is tangentially with the new orleans stuff because andrew jackson was all up in there and and that was kind of before the battle of new orleans as he was kind of you know killing his way across alabama and mississippi um uh oh i think i know who this is uh it's mike right hey dude uh miss you andy more og andy content you are a master of your art uh thank you man uh we all benefit uh blah blah, blah. 
Thank you for sucking my dick, Mike. If this is indeed you, I suspect it is. Uh, it's more spooky hotels. Yeah, fuck yeah. Alien Baby. That was my first feature film, uh, which was about an alien baby. Uh, wow, you're, you're joking. No. One of, one of the first, it wasn't my film. One of the first films, short films I had to produce was about uh, a zombie baby. Oh, fun. Uh, that a dude had to shit out after being raped because that's how it works. <laughs> Classy. Uh, my, yes, my, very classy. My film also ha had a male pregnancy. Um, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't. Uh, he didn't shit it out. It was left ambiguous. Um, actually, it was a cesarean birth. Uh, oh, yeah, that, that makes sense. So, you know, the shitting out thing is nonsense. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You that, obviously piss it out if anything. Part. That's the stupid part. Yeah. Um, uh, all right. Well, uh, 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 if there's uh, no other problems to solve in the world, uh, uh, then uh, I don't know. Can you can you think of anything, George, or, or should we wrap it up? I, I don't. I you know I'm, I don't have to be anywhere. You know, but uh, but you know, three hours is usually it's a long time. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I get it. Um, I've started <laughs> to bore you. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. And we can talk after this. It's just you know, we, we can talk secretly about you know all the secret things that we can talk about. Oh, did you see those stupid chats? Oh, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> stupid people. <laughs> stupid people. <laughs> uh, no, that's it. Uh, you know, thanks for having me, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, of course, and of course. Thanks for all the chats. I think, and I think we did a great job staying on topic. Uh, that's the main thing. And uh, and 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 the, I mean, really, just that the immaculate structure to this live stream is really what uh, you know. Just the the you know this. It was like. It was the yeah, it, it so well structured, uh, so taught. I think that's the word I would use to describe this live stream tonight is taught. Um, no, I if, I to, if I were to do it again, I would be less prepared. No, <laughs> yes, I would be less prepared exactly. Yeah. Um, all right, everyone, we're gonna we're gonna end it now. Thank you, everyone, so much. Uh, thank you, George, for uh, for coming, and uh, uh, we will see you in the next live stream, uh, which is gonna be whenever I feel like it. So, bye. Bye.